Hello, and uh, welcome to the Cases of Costa Vega. Uh, I'm Rick Bud, Game Master, and uh, with me is uh, our Annie Case, uh, Caitlin Bruder, and our Justin Case, Draconix. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, okay, this is weird. I'm going to explain a little bit here. Um, this episode is a bit of an experiment. Uh, we are recording this before the season starts, but it won't stream until like the back half of the season. I'm guessing like episode six or so. We'll see how my guessing skills hold up. I don't think we can make that a side game. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so to be clear for the audience watching this, uh, Caitlin and Drac uh, have never played Annie and Justin before. And uh, I've never GM'd a game in this world before. Um, what you're seeing now is uh, sort of our first crack at all this. Kind of a session zero, only with a little bit of a twist. You'll see. We'll, we'll get there. Um, so it should be pretty interesting. And if it's a disaster, um, please just uh, roll with us. Um, so <laughs> spend, send special thanks uh, to uh, Jake and Lauren and the mods and everybody at QTimes. Um, they're amazing people who keep this platform running. And uh, you can help them. Uh, your subs and your bits help support QTimes. And your donations to the tip jar uh, help support this show and uh, the people on it. And uh, if you can't support us by donating, you can uh, help us by liking and commenting on our youtube videos and sharing our tweets and all that kind of stuff we really appreciate all that and uh, uh the system we use here is uh called the amaranthine system and uh the original version was created by our own caitlin bruder this i'm this so nervous i'm so <laughs> nervous about it <laughs> no it's great honestly it's, it's you know every, every, everything she does is great it's you know um and uh uh, you can follow the show at Cases RPG on Twitter. Uh, the Cases of Costa Vega is available as a podcast uh, for the podcast inclined. Check that out wherever fine pods are casted. And uh, that's the announcements. Time for the case of the week. <laughs> back um so let me get you situated uh i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you a little bit about the location now it's just weird because i'm gonna probably repeat all this stuff in the in the first episode of the season so that this will be the second time the audience is hearing it but the first time you're hearing it so you know weird time shenanigans um costa vega is a mid-sized california city built on the pacific ocean in marlowe county roughly uh, 60 miles south of Los Angeles. The population is about 40,000 people, and the whole place covers no more than, say, 15 square miles. It is, in most respects, a pretty typical Southern California town. There are palm trees, sunshine, view of the mountains to the east and the, the ocean to the west. And as for the vibe, Costa Vega kind of had its heyday in the 60s and the 70s. And since then, growth has, you know, stagnated a tiny bit. So uh, while there are certainly new buildings and, 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 and new franchises and things like that, um, there are a lot of old buildings and old signs uh, still standing. It kind of gives the place a kind of classic rundownish California feel. Uh, and... Otherwise, you know, it's bars and shops and movie theaters, gorgeous boardwalk, an impressive marina. And at the north end of the city, uh, there is a heavily residential neighborhood called Homestead. And in that neighborhood, there is a charming little house at 122 Fletcher Street. It's two stories, has a porch in the front, a yard in the back, two-car garage. And that is where you live. Now, during the real show, you are grown-ups, or at least um, in your 20s. Let's, let's not use the word grown-ups too seriously. Um, <laughs> but in this episode, you are both 12 years old. 
So, before we go any further, Caitlin, what does 12-year-old Annie Case look like? 12-year-old Annie is just scrawny. I mean, adult Annie is, I mean, just doesn't doesn't do much as far as, like, the physical activity, but, like, little kid Annie is, like, just just a twig, just a little, just a little, just a little kid. All she does, all she ever wants to do is read um, and like snoop around. But she's not into gym class. She does everything in her power to uh, avoid that uh, any any sort of uh, group activity like that <laughs> uh, that would uh, involve her having to participate uh, uh, athletically. Uh, and she kind of is just I don't know. She's got her her dark hair, big glasses, uh, and kind of frizzy frizzy hair. Um, and kind of pretty much always has her nose in a book. Okay, and uh, Drac, what does 12-year-old Justin Case look like? Oh, I think uh, I think he's one of the few who hit puberty a bit early. Uh, not the voice dropping, nothing, not the like star boy, anything like that, but just a ridiculous growth spurt that looks awkward for a 12-year-old. I think, <laughs> like... Should, if he were like any just a few inches shorter the kind of amount of width to his limbs would have been normal but right now it just looks honestly stretched like a twig very much like a, a long lanky boy um but unlike um annie he's all about the the sports and the uh, group activities the physical activities um he, it's very rare for you to find him not running around playing uh football or soccer um or anything else like that um he's very rarely ever had his nose in a book unless that book is like a comic book or or a, a magazine or something like that and even then he's just looking at the pictures and the cartoons in it um <laughs> cool um now your respective fathers um and your father sebastian case uh Justin, your father, Caleb Case, entered into a civil union with each other three months ago, three months before this game takes place. And the two of you have only known each other now for about six months. Um, what do you think your relationship has been like so far? Oh. I feel like I'm just kind of Annie's general demeanor is kind of it's no like just me and me and my dad against the world kind of a thing and now there's two whole other people who we have to share a house with and so she's like not cold about it but like awkward and uncomfortable about like just having new people in her space or in in a space that she is supposed to be inhabiting um i don't think it's like bad necessarily she's definitely they probably one time have maybe a, a a sort of maybe a little bonded over comic books very briefly yeah. and then annie just wasn't sure if she was wanted to be bonding and then it and then like left but <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's not like actively antagonistic but i think like annie's just weird i, <laughs> I don't know about justin <laughs> but at this point annie's just like weird <laughs> I, I think with justin i think he's also kind of weird because it's kind of like Oh, I saw that we bonded on this one thing, but it's for some reason it was shut down very suddenly. Did I do something wrong? He's, <laughs> so he's like he's searching for more things to relate with Annie with, and oh, I think all God. of them are like sports related. Yeah. And it just so it just keeps that's just never works. <laughs> So um so like every, like almost every day he's like, oh, hey Annie, me and my friends are going out to climb trees. You want to come? <laughs> like, and he's like, uh, I, book I, I'm, book. I'm in a good pile yeah. of books. So yeah, <laughs> so I think like every day he's like very awkwardly trying to invite Annie to a new outing. And I think mm -hmm. you're just not clicking with him that she's just not a physical <laughs> kind yeah, of person. I don't... So you're just like, okay, not... Everybody likes all things, yeah. right? Everybody likes all things. He's not scootering like. around the neighborhood. Okay, maybe it's another sport she's into. And like walks away thinking about something else. Um... <laughs> That's so hard. <laughs> it's adorable. Okay. Um... I think so, actually, also I think maybe uh, Annie thinks that it's that Justin is actively maybe teasing her a little bit about like because it's always a sports thing. So she's like, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Of course, I don't want to. <laughs> like, yeah. So they're just like both just tween misunderstanding each other. <laughs> yeah. Um. So 
Today, it is the morning of Monday, September 1st, 2008. Oh my gosh. And uh, it's a warm September day. But it's not just any day. Today is the first day of school. And it's not just any first day of school. It's going to be your first day of junior high school. Gross. Now, one of your fathers, uh, Sebastian Case, um, who uh, we're going to cast as a 50-something Hugh Grant, uh, he's still in his bathrobe. He's kind of humming a tune. Do -do 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 -do. And he's making breakfast for you. Um, what, do, what do you each like for breakfast, Annie? Oh, Annie will always, I think, try to get away with the sweetest thing and most, like, non-healthy thing her dad will let her get away with, which probably is, like, peanut butter toast with, like, a couple of chocolate chips on it. But then she's also expected to eat fruit. <laughs> but she will she will egg at any opportunity. Oh, pancakes? Mm, waffles? Mm, <laughs> any, mm? But, yeah, no, on, like, a, on, like, a school day, she probably has, like... Uh, and, and orange and then like peanut butter toast and like a couple of chocolate chips because she begged real hard and, and negotiated because it was the first day of school um, and then uh, yeah has been has to, has to like drink drink water and like have like, have like the rest of like uh, the nutrition Justin um, I'm going to base this on me Drac um, I think recently um, it used to be like the chocolatiest thing he could find, like whatever chocolate he could get his hands on. But I think both him and um, him, Caleb and Sebastian both realized that when he gets when the sugar crash hits, Justin becomes really cranky. Um, so <laughs> I noticed this in myself. I was like, I guess I can't have Cocoa Pops anymore. Uh, so, uh, so I think like he's very purposely not allowed to have anything really high in sugar so i think it's honestly something like um oatmeal or porridge um with like fruits like blueberries and um and, and raspberries in there um so he's very he's kind of eaten staring at annie's like <laughs> chocolate like the, the five chocolate chips she has <laughs> in the shape of a smiley face <laughs> on her toast <laughs> Yeah, and Sebastian's doling out the food, and he's, you know, he's just kind of talking there as, as he brings it. Say, I remember my first day of seventh grade. Sally Foster kissed me on the cheek, and then I got into a fight with the school bully defending her honor. Or maybe it was my honor. Um, I, either way, uh, I, I got my butt kicked and was suspended right after lunch. <sighs> it was a grand time. And he kind of smiles and looks off dreamily into the mid distance. And then uh, your other father, Caleb Case, um, who we're going to cast as a 50 something LeVar Burton, uh, he comes into the room wearing a business suit and straightening his tie. And he looks at both of you and he says, But nobody here is going to get into any fights on the first day of school, right? No. Don't worry. He tells me getting his butt kick stories at the beginning of every school year. Justin just quietly doesn't say anything as he is. <laughs> it's not lying if he doesn't say anything. <laughs> Caleb is, you know, doing well at school will open up all sorts of doors to you later in life. So it is the most important thing in your lives right now. Understood? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then yeah. he looks at his watch and he says, oh, time to get to the bus stop. You don't want to be late. Uh, and, uh, Five minutes later, you are at the bus stop at the end of your block. A big yellow school bus pulls up. Doors open. Who gets on first? I think I go on first. Yeah, um, Annie's dragging her feet. She does as, as much as like a like a learning book bookworm kind of. She does not like school. Like she does not like like she wants to learn on her own. She wants to read stories. She wants to read stuff that is interesting. And she knows that she has to take uh, the first type uh, type of uh, geography or, or yeah geography this year, and that is not interesting to her. She does not want to do that <laughs> right now. She's really into bugs, uh, and the fact that she's not going to be learning about bugs this semester is kind of kind of making her bummed out. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, and you climb up and you get into the bus. Uh, uh, I think Justin makes uh, makes sure to be like, "Hey, driver," and like just walks and like walks by. And the driver uh, who ooh, I didn't cast the driver. Let's say the driver is uh, Seth Rogen. Um, uh, <laughs> kind of ways back, and he's like, "Hey, hey, 
Find a seat. Plenty of room. Morning, Mr. Martin. Let's shuffle on. And um, as you walk up the aisle, kind of the whole bus quiets down and all the kids just kind of look at you, sizing you up. You know how it is. And the bus starts to move and uh, you spot some open seats open in the middle and uh, you move up the aisle towards them. And you are almost there when someone sticks out their foot and trips Annie. Annie, you go flying and you hit Justin and you fall to the ground and all the kids laugh. But even worse, when you fell, the stack of business cards that you carry with you falls out of your backpack and scatters up the aisle. And suddenly the kid who trips you leaps out of his seat is this big older looking kid um she tries to scramble too even though there's no way she'll get them before he does <laughs> yeah i'm gonna cast this guy as uh, mason thames from the black phone um and uh, uh just picture maybe a little more a little tougher looking than, but um and uh this is junior high school so kids in this school could be as old as 14 and he looks like he's probably that old and uh he quickly snatches up one of your business cards and he like reads it out loud Detective Annie will solve any mystery, two dollars. And the kids on the bus all burst out laughing. And he goes, how about solving the mystery of why you're such a dork? Whoa, 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 hold on. I want to like step in between Annie and this bully um, and poke, just prod him in the chest. I think being a detective is pretty cool. And uh, he kind of draws up his full size, which, you know, even though you're big for your age, he's big for his age and yeah. uh, kind of, you know, extends his head up over yours. And he's like, I think you should sit down and be quiet. I think I will. I want to sit in his seat. Oh. And he tries to start a ooh, <laughs> like <laughs> under her hand. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 he's just you know in disbelief he's just like uh you're in my seat oh um i don't think it has your name on it and he kind of steps forward and will sit and like kind of scoot you in and sit in the seat next to you and look up at him and says why don't you solve the mystery of where your new seat is and he he goes to grab Justin like by the shirt over front, the top of me <laughs> kind of like right across you and like pull you out what do you do um i'm not going to do anything i think i i i think instinctually i want to do something but i remember we did just promise that we were Yeah, I did just promise my dad, my dad that we won't get into trouble. So I just kind of let it happen. Uh, yeah, so he pulls you out. And with that, uh, Annie, you also, also uh, come yeah, out both as he kind of like sweeps you out and he, like kind of dumps you both on the aisle and he sits back down in his seat. And he kind of, kind of looks at you and he's like, this isn't over. I'm going to stand up, brush myself off, and put a hand out to Annie. She's Are you okay? a little, like, not, like, flustered or anything, but you can see, like, angry flush, like, annoyed, but, like, not gonna, like, just kind of, like, seething a little bit. And she just kind of huffs and, like, grabs your hand and lets you pull her up. Fine. Uh, pull you up. And I'll say loudly, um... It's fine. He's like, what, 18? He's going to be held back another year anyway. I'm going to find uh, another seat with with Annie. I'm going to scoop up the rest of my stuff and then yeah, and you shove find it all in. Not, not together correctly, but just kind of stuff now in this bag just so it can be in yeah. one place. <laughs> and she scrambles back to the seat. Yeah, and you find an empty seat together, and as soon as you sit down, a girl behind you, who I'm going to cast as uh, Faith Herman from Shazam, um, pops her head up over the back of the bench. She's wearing a cute little sock hat that looks like an ice cream cone, and uh, she says, um, 
That's Owen Bates. He's the biggest jerk in school. Don't worry, not everyone is so unfriendly. And then she extends her hands to Annie and she says, I'm Tegan, Tegan Long. I'm Annie, Annie Case. And then she turns to Justin. Hi. Hi, I'm Justin. And I'll take off her hand. I'm Tegan. Nice to meet you both. And then she looks to Annie and says, are you really a detective? Well, I do have business cards that say I am. Um, I, sh I like to solve the cases, but sometimes uh, I get stopped by grown-ups, so that's harder. But I do, I like a mystery. Do you have one? No. Oh. But if I do, I guess you'll be the first one to know. And she turns to Justin. Are you a detective too? Uh, n not really, no. Um, oh. Yeah, I read detective comics. I mean, you don't need to be so disappointed. <laughs> and she kind of sits back down behind the bed. She'll, before and... before she sits down in this, like, now it's just stuffed of an unorganized bag, she kind of, like, looks for a card that isn't uh, bent up and will uh, pass the, the card over her oh, shoulder. Yeah, and she takes the card, and she takes her wallet out of, out of her bag and puts it very neatly in her yeah. wallet and closes it back oh, up yeah, and looks inside. <laughs> um, and uh, the bus finally pulls up in front of Polito Creek Junior High School. Um, your school. And as you file off the bus, you see a woman in a very sharp looking suit uh, standing in front of the school. I'm going to say she's played by Gina Torres. And uh, she is sort of waving and nodding at the kids as they all walk past her into the building. And uh, when the two of you approach uh, the doors, she smiles and waves at you and says, you're just in an Annie case, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we already I'm in Ma trouble? I didn't do no. it. Oh. I'm Manuela Botero. I'm the principal here. And uh, I know you're both new in the neighborhood, so I just wanted to be sure you knew that my door is always open to you if you ever need anything. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, wait. I, I turn to Annie and go, do you want to give her a business card? And she kind of like, I think like flushes like, <laughs> right again. I say, and goes, I say very loudly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't hide it. I guess maybe. I guess in case you need it or something. And she'll like, like shuffle one out. Uh, this one has maybe a little more of a bend in the corner because she had to find the one not scrunched one and hands it and doesn't look up at her. The best detective out of town? Yeah. Detective Annie will solve any case. Two dollars. I'm going to hold on to this. Thank you. And she kind of like grabs her backpack strap and like starts <laughs> and goes and around like and tucks around her. <laughs> very excitedly and then hurries off after, after Annie. <laughs> And, uh, and you enter the school, and as you walk through the hallways looking for your assigned lockers, you notice a few things. Um, first, the school is huge uh, and kind of labyrinthine, uh, you know, especially to two kids on their first day there. Um, and uh, second, you notice that there are security cameras in the hallways. Um, and finally, you make it to your lockers, which are right next to each other. Uh, but... Before you can open one up, you hear Tegan's voice uh, from down the hall, and she is saying, give it back! And you turn to see Tegan, uh, who is no longer wearing her ice cream cone hat. Uh, she is chasing after Owen Bates, uh, the bully from the bus, and some of his friends. And Tegan says, give me my hat back, Owen! And Owen says, I don't have your stupid hat. And Tegan says, yeah, then you gave it to one of your friends! And she points around at them, which one of you has it? Give it to me, or I'm going to tell Principal Botero, and you'll be sorry! And they all laugh at her, and Owen says, no one has your hat. You must have lost it, you stupid baby. What do you do? I rush in, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, um, oh, we don't, oh, no. And then you, you're you gone. <laughs> the music gone. Um, I think she has, like, a moment of, why is every first date? Why is every first date? Why is every first date chaos? And kind of starts to, like, closes her locker and, and goes, uh, we'll kind of, like, shuffle back following him. All right, Justin, if you're rushing in, uh, one of your bonds is I leap before I look and I speak before I think. So uh, yeah. I'm going to say that that bond uh, is, uh, you have activated that. Um, so 
you get um, what do we call them? Uh, a bond point, mm -hmm. yeah. which can be redeemed at any time later in the game to add plus one die to your roll. Um, so that bond is opened, and uh, you can only use it once during the game. Now you've got that. Um, yeah, so you run down uh, to Owen, and uh, he he just kind of looks at you, and then looks back to T, and then he just looks like he's having a grand old time. Annie, what are you doing? Annie promised not to get in any fights. <laughs> she, she that's she can't get in a fight, so she's like following to like see, but like is not like cannot get involved right now. Like so, she's just following. Annie, yeah. I'm gonna ask you to make the first roll of the. Oh. Series kind of, Ooh, okay. uh, even though yeah, it's, I guess so. <laughs> um, oh give me, uh, let's say a mind roll. All right, mind okay. Ooh, yeah, she can't, she's just, she's just watching. Um, I got a one. One success. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh, right. We, we said one and sixes, right? This is my my game. I know yeah, how it works. One, one, yes, ones and sixes are okay. successes. Uh, <laughs> I said, you know, before before the roll, I said a difficulty level one, two, three, or four, which determines how many you need. Yes, um, I got one. And uh, I think in this case, uh, one will do it. Okay. Um, as uh, Owen Bates, you know, is not the craftiest guy in the universe. Uh, Annie you kind of notice that he is keeping his right arm very close to his body as if he might be hiding something between his arm and his torso. Has, has, has Justin, is, have you already uh, engaged at this point, probably? Yeah. Okay, so then I will, I'll, we'll let you, I've noticed. Justin, <laughs> what, what have you, what, what, what are you doing to engage? I just rush up and I, um, Stand, I think I stand in between Tegan and Owen and just turn to Owen and go, What's with you? Why are you bullying a girl? If you want to fight someone, fight me. Okay, give me a heart roll. <laughs> Woo! Oh, goodness. Um, very much like, why don't you pick on someone your own? Size? Yeah, yeah. Ones are successes, right? Ones and sixes, yeah. I rolled three ones. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, three yeah, successes. That, that, no. That is way more than enough. Uh, and he's going, and, and, and Owen kind of laughs and he's like, Oh, I would be happy to fight you, man. Uh, anytime, any place, you just name it. Right here, right now. <laughs> Let everyone watch. I'm going to yell so that everyone, to get everyone's attention. Okay. And uh, he immediately just shoves oh. you. Um, well, actually, I'll say he immediately goes to shove you right backwards. What do you want to do? I think in Justin's brain, it doesn't count as him getting in a fight if he doesn't throw any punches or swings. Oh so I think he's going to try and keep dodging as best as he can. Uh <laughs> okay, to dodge, give, give, me, um, give me a body roll. Uh, no, sorry, a speed roll. Speed, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. How close am I to Tegan? You could be right next to her if you want. Okay, okay. Two successes. Two successes. Uh, he's very close to you, so yeah. your, your best chance to dodge, you know, it's like you, you know, you maybe don't take the hit as forcefully as you might have, but he kind of just pushes you and you kind of fall back on your ass. Um, I will and, pull, uh, I will pull Tegan out of the way of the sh out of the, the boys. <laughs> I... I take the push, I fall, and like, I'm gonna try and immediately bounce back up and just get in his face again. Um, and not throw any punch, just be in his face again. And um, as you get into his face, you hear a voice from down the hall go, Hey, Bates, what did I tell you about messing with the seventh graders? And you turn and you see uh, a man in a security guard uniform, kind of dark blue rent-a-cop type uniform. Um, and then he walks towards you, uh, say he's played by uh, Brendan Hunt from Ted Lasso. And uh, he, uh, he's he got a, a, his name tag identifies him as Charlie Gray. And uh, he's got he, all business look on his face. And uh, Owen kind of deflates a tiny bit. And he's just like, 
What? I'm not doing nothing. I didn't do nothing. He took Deacon's hat. I walk up and, and pull it up from under his arm. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, and um, Charlie looks at Owen and he's like, "All right, you know what? Come on with me. You're, you, you, it's time for you to have a talk with the principal." And he kind of grabs Owen by the collar and starts pulling him down the hall. And as he does, Owen turns turns around and, and, and he looks back at you, and he looks at you, Annie, and he's like, "I'm going to hurt you for this." And then he turns to Justin. He's like, "You too." What and are you, a bad movie villain? Jeez. And she's going to turn he, in, like, dust off the hat and give it back to Tegan. And Tegan's like, oh, my God, thank you. And she, somebody has to do something about that guy. And she puts her hat back on, looking very relieved. Um, it's a nice hat. Thanks. I can show you where I bought it. We can go to the mall sometime. That'd be fun. Maybe. Yeah. We could be, like, mall kids. It'll be awesome. That's a different game. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, the rest of the day by comparison is uneventful. You find your classes, you meet your teachers, you start learning the lay of the land. And uh, afternoon, you get to take the bus home. When you arrive home, you find uh, Sebastian waiting for you on the front porch. He is reading a book about the Australian outback and sipping some iced tea. And um, he says... Uh, so, how was the first day of junior high? I think it went pretty well. Pretty good. I think we made a friend. Yeah. Maybe also That's an enemy. fantastic. You need friends in this life. Mm. I think I made an arch enemy. Yeah. Uh, an arch enemy. Yeah. And what's your life advice I on that, Pops? Is this, uh, this a bully type? Yeah, they kind of were picking on um, Annie, and I guess me as well, and, and our, our new friend, Tegan. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, did you stand up to the bully? Yeah. I didn't start a fight, though. I mean, I guess... I won't tell your father you do what you gotta do. He kind of hits you on the arm, and he's like, that's my boy. Oh, um, also, I guess everyone everyone knows that Annie's a detective now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Gave my business card to the principal, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it that's like. Yeah. What's the word? Networking. Networking. I heard yeah. Dad say that. Mm hmm. I would say if the principal calls. You can jack up your normal rate. It's true. I did raise it from last year to this year because $1 was middle school and then $2 is junior high. But maybe if Inflation. the principal's hiring me. Yeah. Naturally, well, naturally. experience. You're a smart businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, over the next week, Things are a little rough at school. Owen and his buddies kind of take every opportunity uh, to give the both of you crap. Um, and uh, a lot of the other kids in school who don't want to get caught in Owen's crosshair sort of steer clear of you. So at this point, your only real friend is Tegan. Oh, Tegan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on the morning of uh, Monday, September 8th, um, you're at school. It's the start of the day, and you're both hanging out by your lockers with Tegan when you hear a bit of a commotion down the hall. And uh, you walk towards it, and you see uh, the security guard, Charlie Gray, standing by Owen Bates. And uh, he says, I'm not going to say it again, Bates. Open your locker. And Owen says, why? And Charlie says, I know you've got a knife in there. There are no weapons allowed in the school. We have a very serious policy. So open it up. And Owen's like, I don't have no knife. And Charlie goes, open it up. And Owen goes, fine, see for yourself. He enters, uh, he takes out his key and he uh, he opens his, you know, his master lock that closes the locker and uh, opens it and steps away. And uh, Charlie uh, Gray goes searching around inside the locker and pulls out this 
super scary looking 10 inch long hunting knife like looks like something out of a rambo movie or something like, and, and I, he fully takes like a step like a, even though we're not there next to it like she fully like takes a step back at that i think even justin yeah. does like, not just you the whole crowd of kids just sort of quiets down and everybody looks like real serious and owen goes that's not mine and Charlie goes, yeah, right, let's go, Bates, come on. And he kind of grabs him by the collar again and starts pulling him down the hallway and marching him off in the direction of the principal's office. And uh, after a moment, Tegan says, whoa, I knew that guy was like a total thug, but that's nuts. I mean, do you, do you think he was going to use that knife on you? He did say he was going to hurt you. He also said it wasn't his. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... He does That's what I would have seen seen violent type. He hasn't been very withholding on the amount of violence he wants to enact on people. That guy's a big liar. I wouldn't believe anything he says. Where do you even get that big of a knife? <sighs> Who knows? Hmm. Anyway, let's hope they expel him for this. We'll never have to see him again. I wouldn't be mad about that. And uh, over the next week, things are a little quieter. You don't see Owen Bates on the bus or at school. And uh, you eventually find out from Tegan that Owen has been suspended. And uh, he is even going to have to appear in juvenile court now over the knife. Um, and then on the afternoon of Sunday, September 14th, uh, you are at home. Say you're both watching TV. Uh, and Sebastian comes in and says, uh, your school friend is here outside on the porch. Tegan? Oh. I, uh, Andy just gets up. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> I, I get up as well just saying, oh, Tegan's here. And then go out as well. Yeah. And you walk outside and standing on the front porch, you see Owen Bates. I instinctually step in front of Annie. Annie just kind and of like looks confused. And he kind of looks down at the, his shoes, you know, and, and he's, I, uh, I'm sorry I started with you. Um, th that knife was not mine. I was framed and no one believes me, not even my parents. And, and, and I'm in real trouble. I could be expelled. I could go to Julie for this. So, and he reaches into his pocket and he pulls something out and he holds it up. Annie's business card. I want to hire you to find out who put that knife in my locker. I I give Owen like the dirtiest glare before stepping aside and looking to Annie. I think she just looks at him for a, for, for a few beats. And then like you see her kind of like straighten up just like a little bit. She says two dollars please. And he reaches uh, into his pocket and he pulls out his wallet and he takes out two dollars and he hands it towards you and he says, <sighs> okay we've got a swing in the backyard tell us everything you know and she pulls a little notebook out of her pocket okay and uh i do a very just very clear <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and he sits down on the swing and he's like believe I need help from a seventh grader. It's, all right. I, I, I don't know. I don't know anything. I just know that that security guard asked me to open the locker and then bam, there's this knife that I've never seen there before. Okay. Well, there are some things then you can tell us then when was the last time you were in your locker? How about that? I mean, I almost never go in my locker. Uh, okay. That's man, very maybe important. Maybe a couple of days earlier. Okay. Um, nothing in there but school. it's where i just put my school books you know at the beginning of the semester and then, you know i usually don't need them that much okay what did the knife look like i mean you know, i was like 10 inches long and uh it kind of looked like an army knife like uh, my, my uncle was in the army and he had kind of a similar one although it was a lot smaller did you any any anything specific about it? Did it have a color or a word or a, di a distinct type of wrapping or anything that you I noticed? only saw it for a couple of seconds. 
you know, when Charlie took it out. Then he gave it to the principal, and I think she put it in one of her drawers, and now I don't know what happened to it. She probably gave it to the sheriff. I think during this questioning, I've, like, left this to Annie. I think this is, <laughs> like, I think I've seen Annie do their thing before, and I've either just, I just, I guess I just never been involved. So I think I'm in the, I'm in the back um, backyard, like, kicking a soccer ball up against the wall, like, back and forth, back and forth. But, like, every so often looking over my shoulder to make sure <laughs> Owen isn't trying anything funny. Um, I think this would, this is, like, the first, like, case, like, actual, like, case Annie's had since just so like you've seen her probably like grill people before like yeah. this kind of a thing but not like for missed like this kind of mystery solving yeah so this is yeah so you're like oh yeah i know i know how she i know <laughs> yeah. how she does this <laughs> she does this at uh, breakfast <laughs> like, <laughs> but i think i i like i'm kicking the ball against the wall and i kind of just like without turning back to face him i just go do you have any enemies who wants you out of school or maybe it'll be easier for you <laughs> to look the ones who don't want you out it and, and, and I, he sort of laughs and he's just like, you know, I've never worried about being that popular. I don't know. That Tegan chick hates my guts because I stole her hat. Maybe she did it. I think Annie just like blinks at him. It's always I'm the sure. ones you suspect the least. I'm sure there are better candidates. Have you pissed off any adults lately? Besides this? <sighs> I mean, my parents, the principal, all the security guards in school, all the teachers in the school. It's just, it's a big knife. That's hard for a kid to get a hold of. Not impossible, but. Well, if I knew where it came from, I wouldn't need to give you $2, would I? Mm-hmm. And she's gonna tear out a page from her, uh, an empty page from her notebook, and she's gonna have him try to like draw the shape of it because Annie doesn't know anything about knives, but like she thinks maybe she can find someone else or find a book and try to compare it. So like she's gonna direct him like if it had, if you can remember any like where the teeth would have been if it was near the base, if there was any, if it had ho little like holes in it, just anything you remember, just try to just try to draw. It doesn't have to be perfect. And she's gonna hand him an extra pen and see if she can get him to like recreate the like any because their knives are so <laughs> there are so many kinds of knives and if we've gotten maybe hunting maybe army knife and like both of those would have different so she just wants to see if she can get any identifying features as far as like serration or like blade type or whatever and like even if we don't get like names for anything just to like have that for her to compare it to that's what that's what she wants out of this okay and uh, he does his best, and uh, you know he's a bully, but uh, he's also a surprisingly talented artist. And uh, the knife is the, the picture is not that bad, um, and uh, it's a decent likeness. You, you you also got a quick look at the knife mm -hmm. when it got pulled out. So yeah, like, he was just know, he was closer. So I'm like, I just if there's anything yeah. that he saw that she would have missed, that's what she wants. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, you know, it's got sort of like a handle uh, that's got, you know, sort of like a finger shaped grip on it, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, like, you know, slots for the fingers and um, uh, it's, it's got like a little hilt uh, on it and then the, the blade sort of starts very thick and kind of thins as it gets to the top, you know, it's got a mm -hmm. serrated edge and um, uh, let's say it's got like, um, it's got sort of an unusual crisscross pattern all over the handle. Mm, okay. And I think uh, Annie watches him draw this and goes, okay, well, clearly you know where we live if you think of anything else. Um, Justin? Yeah. She doesn't even look over. Do you have any questions for our client? I think you hear like <laughs> him walk over and stand beside you, kind of look at Owen, his arms crossed, like way too high, as if yeah. any high makes, shows how angry he is. Yeah. He goes... You said your uncle has a knife similar to that? It's kind of like it. Is there anything noteworthy about that knife in particular? Does it have like, I don't know, initials on it, names? Uh, tell me about that uh, knife, I guess. I think he got it in the army. Um, Rangers or something like that? I don't know. Uh, he tells me a lot about his military service, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't really listen. I just kind of zone out because, you know, cares, boring fucking grown-up stuff. 
Yeah, army kind of sounds scary. Um, so there's no like identifying marks on that knife, your uncle's specifically. Um, not that I remember. I think it had a serial number on the handle, like uh, you know, U.S. Army serial number. I like turn to um, Annie. Can we do? Can we figure that out? Can we find the knife and see? I don't know how they do it. I know in movies they kind of like run serial numbers. I don't know how to. Run. I, mean, I don't know the have... serial number, but. But to have it, if it's if it is an army knife, it might be. Yeah. Identifiable. Hmm. So there's that. I don't know where we would identify it, but that's something that makes it a unique knife. We would know exactly where it came from then. But we'd have to figure out what the number is. Yeah, we'd have to get our hands on the knife. I think we need to do some research. Maybe some recon. Yeah. Okay. And Owen heads off. Uh, he gives you his uh, his phone number in case you need anything more information from him. Although he says he's told you everything he thinks he knows. And um, yeah, what do you what do you? It's Sunday afternoon, and um, let's say you know you got enough time left in the day to do do some research if you want, uh, or, or some investigating. Anything you want to do today? And he wants to go to the library. I mean, I think. Yeah, Justin will just follow. I think <laughs> Justin is very much like, I think he's is at a point where he's like, he's on the investigation with Annie, but he's not officially on the investigation with Annie. He's just like following because... She hasn't told him not to hang around. And yeah, so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Um, are we like in like a neighborhood? Like, is this like a town that's like walking distance to the library kind of a thing? Or are we further out? From like the main well, it's, it, the area that you are in, like the north side of town, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of suburban. So it's like what you have is like a bunch of neighborhoods that are, you know, sort of arbitrarily divided up. Yeah. So like, you know, it's it's like one of these, you're, you're standing on one side of the street and you're in one neighborhood and you cross yeah. the street. And now you're in the next neighborhood kind of deal. You know, sometimes they're separated by train tracks or, or, or a major road or something, you know. So I guess, is it like bikeable, basically? I am I feel like I have yeah, such a bad gauge for this kind of thing because I grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere. So I'm like, you, sometimes people can bike places from home i never could but like sometimes that's normal yeah let's <laughs> say it absolutely is bikeable for you um okay. you, you you like i said you live in the neighborhood of homestead uh and uh all m the most nearby stuff is in the neighborhood of palito creek which is where your your school is and we'll say uh palito creek library is the closest library um and uh it's you know it's a decent bike ride probably takes you like 30 minutes or something but um but you are there and uh, you uh, you walk in uh, walk into the library and kind of look around. What are you looking for? I want to find um, books on uh, like like outdoorsy kind of a thing. So like if I want to find like identifying stuff, I think she, recently because she's really into bugs right now. She has spent a lot of time in the wilderness, kind of outdoorsy camping stuff. Um, and so she's been over here, so she'll maybe be a little more familiar with this area, but she's looking for anything on, like, guides, tools, uh, uh, types, even, honestly, even, like, anything on, like, blacksmithing, uh, and then, like, army. So she just wants to find books about knives. She wants to try to compare this knife to any sort of book that has, like, ident identification or, like, silhouettes of types of knives in it and see if she can find any that strike a resemblance so that she can see if she can figure out a, a, an origin point. Even if it's okay. not specific, but that's that's her goal. That's her day goal is to like pull books and look th through that. <laughs> Are you doing anything to help, Justin? Honestly, no. <laughs> gonna hold books. Just... She's gonna pull books and she's gonna just start handing them to you yeah, and makes a little think, pile. Like, you... <laughs> mechanically, I'm not doing anything to help, no. but I think like in fiction, I'm like carrying the books that um, I think she is... starts and she's like got it under her chin and is walking and like sees you kind of out of the corner of her eye and like pulls one out and like hands it to you behind her and then kind of as she pulls another yeah. one starts handing one from the bookshelf and one from her pile until she's free handed <laughs> and you've just got a stack <laughs> okay annie uh give me a mind roll okay um, i have um, a skill in speed reading oh yeah okay that applies so you your, your mind score is uh your mind your, your mind score is four and your speed reading uh gets you an additional two wow. We're um, doing this with, for Kid Adventure. It's just a just, level one. Oh, oh, just level one. Right. Sorry. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. No, 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 no. Sorry. I'm right. 
regardless of your skill level, a skill oh, allows a player to add two right. six to their die right. pool. It's it's how yeah. far it stretches that changes your level. Yep, no, it's okay. It's okay. Right. So everyone watching, can we uh, st uh, the rules are still in very much in flux. We <laughs> yes, we, we 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 have tailored the the game system to our <laughs> specific show, so it's a little bit different than the regular system. So sometimes we get confused. Yeah. yeah. Two sixes. So two sixes. Two sixes. Right. Okay. Um. You're there for a good two hours. Oh, yes. Uh, She's willing to spend time. Yeah. Through, <laughs> Takes over the corner and... table and, yeah. Justin's, like, running up and down, like, the, the stacks, kind of, mm -hmm. you know, like, testing his speed and stuff like that. Um, but it takes a while, but you would eventually find a knife that is a good match. And uh, it, it, it is, in fact, a what it's called a... Um, it is listed in the book as a, let's call it, um, a military-styled hunting knife. Okay. And uh, the book says, you know, useful for skinning animals and, you know, all your sort of miscellaneous hunting needs. Okay. I think, like, during the two hours, it's only two hours, but, like, the camera kind of cinematic is, like, it's almost like a time lapse of you see, like, um, Annie reading and you see Justin, like, <laughs> running up and down and then suddenly he's sitting down trying to read a comic and he's running up and down again and is asleep on <laughs> in a chair. And it almost, yeah. like, it looks like, like, oh, this took over a day, right? Like, no, it was just two, two hours. hours. <laughs> Justin is very, just very excitable. Can't stop moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Perfect, yeah. Um, and, uh, okay. and, and then you head home. And um, I think as we're walking, uh, yeah. uh, or biking, I guess, because we, yeah, we biked here. Uh, uh, yeah. I think they're kind of like doing like little like weaving back and forth on the like empty neighborhood streets. Uh, and he's like kind of like talking out loud. She's like, like all of the the knives that she thought were closer and whatever. And the, the military style hunting knife. Is there like people who hunt? Is that like is there like a big hunting community? I mean, here? you can look at uh, Vega, I guess. Um, I mean, there's definitely no way that the kids got their hands on it. So maybe a, a you, parent. You I don't think a kid it? could buy. Yeah, um, just like as like a ch like there are like laws on like children buying weapons. Like I know it's a hunting knife, but I don't think a child could purchase like a military hunting knife, right? I don't know. I mean, I know in the UK, I like, like I don't know. In, yeah, mm. in the UK, like knives straight up, whether it's like a table knife or a, uh, like a carving knife, kids cannot buy it without ID. Yeah. But I don't know if that's the same in like in the US or different parts of the US. Well, I guess it might not be the same. Uh, hang on a second. Let's see. Um, California, the minimum age requirement for purchasing and carrying a knife is 18 years old. Okay. This applies to all types of knives, including folding pocket knives, fixed blades knives, bales, hung butterfly knives, et cetera, et cetera. Excellent. Okay. So according to this totally um, superfluous Google search, we're yes, going to go absolutely. With <laughs> no, it's good. I, I'm going to, I'm into it. I love it. I love the realism. Um, yes. Okay. So, so a kid couldn't have bought it. Well, how, how old is Owen? 14. 14. 14. Yeah. I was like, he didn't that much older this. So if, if it was his, it would have been probably a parent's. Yeah. But if it wasn't his, it would have been either another kid who took it from a parent or an adult who can actually buy a knife. Yeah. I mean, do you believe him? I don't know. I don't think he would have been nice to me mm. if he was if it was his, you know? That feels a little elaborate for him. That feels like a little bit of an elaborate gotcha. I think, I think he's he's more to, like, the type who would threaten me with a knife if he had one, as opposed to get himself put in juvie for fakesies. I don't know. I think Justin, like, very okay. over-exaggerates, uh, like, narrowed eyes as he's, like, thinking about her, and he goes, <laughs> I don't know. I don't trust him. I mean, but, I don't either, but he but gave I'll, me two dollars. Yeah, I guess so. And if you think it'll be worth looking into, I, I guess I can make sure you don't get into trouble. 
if anything, it's a fun, fun little mystery. And I like, I'm, I like being nosy. It's sometimes fun. It's fun to know kind of things. And now I know okay, a lot so about you... knives. And she like pats her backpack where she probably checked out like three of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you don't like, you so say you rather like hunt down like a knife than like climb trees and play soccer. I'm trying to gauge what you're into, and I feel like he's always like, like kind of. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're just like they're crassy crossing bats. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, b- books, movies, mostly. Okay, movies, movies. Okay, I, I can I can get behind movies. Yeah, no, I can. Do get you want to stop movies. by Blockbuster on our way home? Okay. Yeah. What do you want to get? I don't know. I haven't I haven't been keeping keeping track i've been on books recently i go in phases for books movies books movies so i don't know what's out well you can go check it out wait what book are you reading currently and she kind of like mumbles huh did, did you say what book are you i think he yells like yeah yells, she's what like biking a little bit faster <laughs> You're really quiet. Catch up. And she starts biking faster. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold up. <laughs> He's just trying, trying to catch up with with Annie. What book are you reading? <laughs> you catch up with her pretty easy. She is not. Yeah. <laughs> you got longer legs. And she she eventually like slows down. And is like, fine, I'm reading another one of the Bird Dog and Gumshoe books. Wait, okay, that's where I heard it from. Okay, that makes sense. I saw, okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I saw a poster of, what was it, Bird Dog and, and Gumshoe? Is it like Gumshoe Sue? Um, mm-hmm. Something like that. I think they made one of the books a, like a short movie. I saw a post for it on uh, near Blockbuster. Do you want to get that? That feels correct. Okay then, because I kind of want to know what this is about, but I don't want to. The books you read seem way too big. I, I'd rather watch like a, a, an hour movie. All right, sounds good to me. I didn't okay. know they were making movies out of these movies. Movie versions of books are questionable, and she's like, kind of like he's the kind. I okay. think they start to crisscross their way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and you stop at a blockbuster and you find um, uh, the movie. It's called um, uh, uh, Bird Dog Billy and Gumshoe Sue in. <laughs> in, in the case of Caitlin dropping all of her dice, uh, <laughs> uh, Bird Dog Billy and Gumshoe Sue. In the case of the Ghost Cat, and um, it's uh, it's like an hour long kind of direct, you know, direct uh, video, directed video kind of thing. Yeah. And um, it's let's say somewhat less than faithful to the books. Um, uh, even like they change the title, like the books are called Bird Dog and Gumshoe. The movie's called Bird Dog Billy and Gumshoe Sue, and like they 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 mixed their characters up and gave them all kinds of talents, and they made it way too actiony and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, what, what what do you think you would think of the movie, um, uh, Annie? Oh, she has so many opinions. Oh, as we're as <laughs> like we're watching anything that deviates from the book, she will announce it. Like that is the <laughs> like she is the like mm, she's very much like a she needs to likes to learn everything about a thing that she likes and so if it's like a, a movie uh, or something she'll like get like the production book and learn about the special effects and then when she watches it again with someone she'll tell you how they did it if to her on to her understanding her 13 year old understanding but this is like this has been her favorite book series since she learned how to read uh and so this is an affront to everything <laughs> that uh annie stands for and so she she watches the whole thing raptly, but she does grumble about everything that she thinks she considers incorrect the entire time. <laughs> that is perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, Justin absolutely loves it. He's eating out. He's like, is this what the books are like? This is if this is these what the books. I'd actually maybe read them. Um, the books are better, actually. This is uh, kind of better than uh, this. Uh, yes, this is kind of a very sad uh, recreation, um, and I'm not definitely don't i don't have any interest in going into film and, and movies and tv but now i feel like i should just so i can do it better i mean i'd like to see that but if the books are better than this and maybe which one should i start with i'll give it a try do you kind of like side eyes you a little bit like 
she's waiting for a punchline. He just stares at you waiting. I have all of them except for the new, the newest series, so you can kind of take your pick. I like the second series best, just because it's, you know, they kind of get into rhythm a little bit more, but they're all okay, good. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter which one I pick? It's no, kind they're of like kind of standalones. You get, I mean, maybe, I guess maybe, she's like kind of loosening up a little bit. I guess maybe read the first book and then you can pick any of the other ones after that because the first one, they actually like introduce characters a little bit, but okay. I mean, you, they're just, they're just like solo adventures. They're just little like, little mysteries, each one. I'll give it a try. Um, I'm kind of a slow reader. Uh, that's that's okay. kind of like my weak point. So I might take a while. Mm, that's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. And she'll kind of like, okay, okay. And she'll get up and she'll go uh, and she'll lead you to uh, her bookcase uh, in, her, in her bedroom. That is just one of like, I think that is like the main thing in her room. Like her one wall is just like bookcases. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and definitely like, I think like her dad keeps book, has always like kept books on her bookcase too, because it's like, well, if this is where all the books are going, like he, he has like a couple, like he does not. Yeah. So like, there's like stuff, there's definitely like, there's like an encyclopedia in here. There's like, whatever, there's like things that are not like kid literature. And then there's also like the books that are like the stories, which is mostly what she's interested in. And, and one yeah. of them is just, uh, 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 Burdaka Gumshoe books. And she kind of goes up and like goes to the first, she gets up a little, maybe a little crate, and so she can stand on it and get the first book from the top uh, left, and we'll pull it down and give it to you, and then she'll kind of like skim uh, in her mind, try to figure out which one would be a good, fun second one that would maybe I think she pulls Ghost Cat, because we just watched that one, and he needs, in her mind, he needs to know that the book is better, and then she <laughs> pulls Let's see. She pulls the steamboat mystery, and she pulls that one too, and he gives it to you. Thank you. And I kind of like flick through them, just like quick flick through them. Are there pictures in them? Some. I think they're like older style. Like th they've got a few every once in a while, like etching kind of prints. Yeah, kind of. And then these yeah. are. I think they're made for probably slightly younger than these guys. Like they're, she's probably at like the top. They're probably at like the top of the. You know, this is for you. She more reads them out of maybe just like nostalgia and love of it um yeah. <laughs> but uh uh they do i think they're like older these are like reprints of like older books so they have like the yeah. original kind of etching original. etching okay. prints in them occasionally not often like it's maybe like once a chapter there's like a little <laughs> yeah i think he like flicks through them and you kind of see his face for the first second he sees like no picture no picture then he sees the picture and goes okay and yeah i'm like Okay, well, I'm definitely going to start reading this probably, I don't know, after homework? Oh, I just remember that I have homework. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you want, I mean, I I, I did half of mine already because I didn't want to do it when I was at home. Can um, I, but like, I could... copy your homework but change some things so it's not really copying? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, perfect. Because <laughs> I wasn't listening in class. That's okay. uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say I could... I could read read the first chapter out loud. Like to me? Oh, okay. While you work on stuff, because I know you, I know you like to do, like, practice stuff. Which sport are you in this season again? I'm gonna try and join the soccer team. Um, okay. I'm hoping if Owen does come back, he's not on it. I don't really know how it works in in school, but um, yeah, soccer maybe track and field. Uh, I knew that you had plans to do that a little bit today, so maybe I could read the first chapter while you do practice i'd like that okay and then maybe you can join me when we do like the drills um I, there's, there's, <laughs> uh, like the like 60 60 yard sprints is really good for helping with acceleration is there um, like a I read thing that, in a book. that i could like stand and you like kick it around me or something and um I, you gotta i mean i guess it, you could do that at the wall in my free kicks, but that would run the risk of you getting hit by the yeah, ball. Yeah, I guess I don't want to do that. Uh, we'll in, figure in it from out. outside, you hear this voice, uh, Caleb's voice going, Don't kick soccer balls at your sister! Okay. She's like, oh, okay. I kind of was like, oh, I guess <laughs> not. Uh, we'll, fi we'll figure it out. We'll be okay. And then uh, she'll go kind of like reach for her bag. And be like, okay, I have a little bit to finish too, but you can look at the stuff from before and we'll, they'll go I think and, and set up on the on the dining room table and try to finish their homework 
All right. And you go to do homework and you go to do drills. And uh, uh, the next morning, uh, it's Monday morning, uh, September 15th, I think. And um, as uh, as Sebastian and Caleb are getting you ready for school, uh, Caleb um, says, uh, uh, Sebastian, don't forget, we have the PTA meeting tonight. And uh, Caleb turns to you and he says, um, you know what? I think you two kids should come too. You know, they're having a PTA meeting about the, this uh this boy who was found with a knife in his locker. Um, the parents are, you know, obviously everybody's very concerned about what the school is going to do about like, such a lapse in security. So uh, this is a good chance for you to learn about civics and engagement with the community. And Sebastian's just like, they don't want to go. It's going to be boring. And it's Caleb is just like, it's like, well, sometimes important things are boring. Everything can be exciting. Yeah. We'd actually love to go, right, Annie? She's like, what? Is yeah, that- it's a great chance to learn about c- civilizations and c- civic, yes, civic, du- civic duty, right, Annie? She's just like looking at you. Like she's <laughs> not. She's like, what? I want to use my bond. I want to use the bond with um, Annie. Uh, we have an unspoken bond. Oh, I was gonna... attempt. We... We're 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 forming that right now. This is this yeah, is you're the... forming. You, you yeah. don't actually have that bond because yeah, you, this is the game. But it. like, yeah, okay, you're gonna yeah, okay. Um, uh, so do you want me to type to you what? <laughs> what? Then? I think I think I know what you're trying to say, but like, she, but like Annie's like, what are you talking about? Right, I was like wagging my eyebrows, looking at I just very exaggerated, like she's right? like mimicking you. Exactly. See, we want to go, Dad. <laughs> and yeah, I put so just arm like, around Annie. Something wrong with your eyebrows. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. She kind of like as what she kind of like. She goes, why do we? Why do we want to go to the? Why do we want to go to the adult I'll meeting? Ex- I'll explain. I'll explain on the bus. She's like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> You're weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right, boom. We're gonna smash cut you to the bus. We like both sit, sit down. Like, there's a frame. You see both both of us just like sit down with our backpacks. Okay, why 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 are we going to school when we're not don't need to be at school? We need to get a look at the knife, right? And the knife is probably being kept in the principal's office. Are they gonna bring it to the PTA meeting? No, but they will be in the PTA meeting, which means no one's gonna be in the principal's office. Okay, this is true. Except for maybe. You and okay. myself. Okay, you okay, and me. I'm ca- catching up. Got it. Okay, so, but what happened? They took him to juvie. What happens yeah. if the knife is with the police? Oh, hmm. Then we don't find anything. And then we have a chance of getting busted. For But if we don't go there, we have no chance of finding out anything about the knife. That's true. Maybe there's a report. Tegan the... pops her head up from over the back of the seat and she's just like, he obviously did it. I mean, right? They must have him on security camera. That's why they've got those cameras. I mean, he's got to be guilty, doesn't he? That's the other thing, too, I guess. We would know 100% sure if we looked at the security cameras. Which is why we should be at the PTA meeting because less people be around, probably, where the security footage is kept. Maybe. He's right. I'm going to the PTA meeting with my uncle. I can act as lookout for you. That'd be perfect. Makes sense to me. Even if there's no knife in the... in the, We can start with the cameras. And then we can figure it out from there. Yeah. Sounds good. Maybe we scope it out today? During See, passing time? Might not be a detective, but... I go where it takes. I mean, you've been helping me out with this case so far. Yeah, I, I always thought it was more like a bodyguard i think that's cooler okay yeah you can be my bodyguard yeah and, and Tegan bodyguard kind of looks, justin. He, so it looks at justin kind of a little dreamy and kind of just like and he's got cool hair too mm-hmm. thank you <laughs> he kind of like messes his hair <laughs> <laughs> um 
yeah, okay, you you go through the day, and, uh, you know, um, Sebastian and Caleb asked you to be back home uh, right after school, so you can I will say during I will say just during passing time and, like, maybe during lunch, she wants to, like, not quite fully loiter, but, like, walk a little slowly past the areas where she knows, like, the security guard's, like, stuff is. Like, if there's, like, an office that the security inhabit or something. She just wants to, like, scope it out, like, gently beforehand. Well, that 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 actually works pretty well. Um, it's uh, if if you remember, um, what did we? Uh, what did we we said um, certain kinds of preparatory work can reduce the difficulty of tasks. Mm -hmm. So let's count this as a preparatory work. Um, Annie, give me a mind roll to see uh, exactly how much you can figure out. Let's find. Out. Is this like a, is it like a, a closed door thing or is it like a glass like office? Oh my gosh, uh, that is six 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 one. Wow. Um, <laughs> Holy moly! <laughs> oh my god, six 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 one four successes. Wow. Oh my god. Holy shit. Um, that is very impressive. For wow. The, the, the the yeah, I mean, it was not at level four task, but. It doesn't get much better than that. All right, oh so um, four dice apparently. Drop your, all your dice on the floor, and then next time you roll them, they'll they'll be thankful you picked them up. <laughs> you uh, you pass by. You see the principal's office and the security office are kind of right next to each other. Um, they they both uh, you know they have this is like old fashioned civil architecture kind of building yeah. you know it's like they both have like kind of key locks uh, uh, in, in each of the office doors um, the doors are wooden but they each have like a big kind of glass panel window in them so that you know you can sort of see through and see who's inside you can see that the principal's office uh, has um there's a receptionist's desk and a bunch of waiting area seats and some potted plants and a computer. And uh, then you can see the door to the principal's actual office office, you know, beyond that. The security office, uh, that door is um, just solid wood. You can't see through it, but you do catch um, Charlie Gray opening it. And as you sort of peek in, you know, when he opens the door, you can see a panel of monitors and a computer and a bunch of, uh, um, I guess, it would be video cassette recorders uh, and um, uh, panels of tapes on the back wall. And uh, that's what you see, but like I will now factor into the fact that you have done the preparatory work when I yeah. set the level for the challenges as you go there later. I okay, just if it's like lunchtime or something, uh, any when, when uh, Mr. Gray goes goes in, if he's got kind of the door like open like a little bit, she's gonna like go and like knock on knock on the wood a little bit. And, uh, yeah, Charlie Gray, uh, uh sticks his kind of head out and he's just, uh, yep, yep, what's going on? Yep, uh, oh. oh. Hi, Mr. Hey. Gray. Everything's fine. Um, I just, uh, who, I was- Who are I, you? Oh, my name is Annie. Annie. Mm -hmm. Annie what? Case. Annie Case. Mm -hmm. Well, if I don't know your name, you must be staying out of trouble. What can I do for you? Oh, I, I just, um, uh, uh. Well, I, 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 I was, I was wondering if, if you, uh, had any openings for, um, student hall monitor positions or anything like that. Student hall monitor positions. Well, yeah. I know I can't be a security guard cause I'm 13, but I didn't you know if you had anything you put your mind to except being a security guard because you're only 13, but Hall monitor, you can be in two years when you're 14. No oh. seventh graders. Hmm. Is is there like a, a do you have like a packet or like an informational booklet or so I can just know what to expect? Well, hmm. Do me a favor. Give me a uh, <laughs> give me a heart roll. Oh no! Okay. Is right. That's persuasion, right? It is. Yeah, it is. It's it's trying to convince someone. Okay. <laughs> She's just a little weirdo. Okay. A six and a one. Okay, and uh, he says, 
yeah, I can't see any harm in that. And he hands you the So You Wanna Be a Hall Monitor uh, packet that gives, like, you know, kind of all, you know, the instructions to people who have got the job. It's like, it's like you know, it's like you got to wear, you know, your hall monitor sash or whatever. And, you know, students are allowed to go to the bathroom this often and mm -hmm. don't let students into this area. And if something goes wrong, contact this person, yeah. that kind of stuff. Cool. And so she wanted to have gotten this and maybe there'll be helpful information here but also hopefully she got a full look of the open door room <laughs> while this conversation is happening Absolutely. and then she will uh, bail yeah i mean especially you know with your with your preparatory work all you, you you have seen everything it's like burned into your brains okay cool and uh you get home um, you, you know, you have kind of an early dinner and, uh, then, uh, Sebastian and, um, Caleb, uh, they take you, you all drive together, uh, in the family car, um, uh, to, uh, back to Polito Creek Elementary School, uh, where the school gym has been set up kind of like a meeting room. There is now like a podium at the front of the room and a bunch of folding chairs have been put out for the parents and, um, the parents they are you can you can tell it's the vibe in the room there's a lot of outrage and uh, uh principal botero is kind of standing at the podium she hasn't started saying anything yet and there are a couple of other people up there with her um you don't know who they are um and uh you you sit down next to uh, sebastian and caleb and you can see a couple of rows you know couple of rows ahead of you to your right, uh, you can see uh, Tegan and her uncle, uh, presumably, uh, who, uh, who, who she said uh, was, was uh, taking her there. Um, and um, I'm going to say he's played by Mackay Pfeiffer. This is no movie, but there is Mackay Pfeiffer. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to do? I think for a bit, Justin's going to be watching. I, I'm assuming, do you mean, is this before like the meeting begins or do you, do you mean like what am I doing during the meeting? Um, well, before the meeting begins, are you doing anything or are you just waiting? I think Justin is just waiting. He's trying his best to look excited for this meeting, <laughs> um, but not too excited. <laughs> So that uh, Kayla doesn't think that something else is going on. You know, perfectly excited for a PT meeting. Yeah. That a 12-year-old okay. boy would be <laughs> going <laughs> through. <laughs> Finally, uh, Principal Botero kind of walks up to the front of the room and says, okay, I think uh, I think everyone who's coming is here. Um, and, uh, well, as we know, there was a very serious security situation uh, in the school a couple of weeks ago. A student... Um, was caught with a 10 inch uh, knife um, and uh, oh, dad. Uh, um, and, dad. and then yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, and, poking, uh, I'm poking Caleb like, and, and Caleb looks over and says what? I need to go pee just hold it in, this is important to pay attention I'm pretty and, sure you could die if you hold pee and I read it in, in a, a magazine once I don't want to die dad, I need to go you pee are, you are not going to die just sit and be quiet give me a favor, I'll give me a favor. To, to Sebastian like, dad I need to go pee I give me a hard pee. roll <laughs> <laughs> Annie uh, is actually listening she wants to know what they're like what they say versus what Owen told us Okay. Um, while you're convincing your dads to let you go pee, uh, Annie, um, oh uh, Principal Botero sort of explains very similarly. A knife was found in the student's locker. The student has been uh, was was handed over to the sheriff's office. The sheriff is, uh, you know, taking full action, and you know that the, the student will be prosecuted as a juvenile. The school is looking into expulsion. Um, at, you know. At, uh, perhaps you know, suspension or perhaps expulsion is a remedy. Um, and, you know, the parents generally kind of seem outraged, asking kind of hostile questions. Um, Tegan's uncle, uh, did I call him uncle? Yes. Oh, let's just call it Tegan's dad. I, I think, oh. yeah, whatever. Let's make him Tegan's uncle. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> sorry, I watch my language. Um, <laughs> Tegan's uncle uh, kind of hops out of his seat and kind screams at her. He's like, this boy was in my 
you know, my niece's face. He was threatening her. You know, uh, he, you know, he's sort of outraged. You know, he demands that, you know, the student be expelled. He wants to know what the teacher's going to do about it. Um, and uh, Annie? Yeah, a Annie, Annie, like, holds her hand up to, to like, see if she'll get called on to have a, a comment. <laughs> Make a heart roll. Or a question, I suppose. By the way, I, f I failed my <laughs> <Yeah>. role. <laughs> you failed your Zero successes. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Sebastian kind of just points at Caleb and just kind of shrugs, you know. <laughs> they they seem to kind of be ignoring you. Um, and uh, Principal Botero says, um, to address this, I have brought down uh, Mr. James Berkland, the owner of Berkland Security Services, uh, the company that provides security for our school. And um, a man in a suit, I'm going to say he's played by uh, Mark Marin, uh, stands up behind her. And he walks up to the podium and uh, he says, yes, well, this is a very serious situation. Uh, children bringing weapons to school, as we know, these these things can often end in tragic circumstances. And uh, after this, uh, after I found out about this incident, I reached out to the principal immediately. And uh, we have had a long discussion uh, and uh, the school has decided to drastically increase uh, the security presence to put your mind at ease. We are going to add numerous new guards, new security systems. Uh, the school is uh, going to appropriate um, a much larger percentage of its budget to keeping your children safe. And I can vow to you that that money is going to be spent in the most effective ways possible. And uh, he starts going over... Um, what those new security measures are going to be um and uh what are you doing well since no one uh called on annie she's gonna lean over to sebastian and be like dad 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 yeah dad, i want to i want to know if they think they know where it came from because that's a that i saw it it was a really big knife why would I want to know why a kid would have access to a really big knife? Make a heart roll. <laughs> Come on, Sebastian. This is your little weirdo. Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Three, five, two. No, nothing. <laughs> uh, and he's just like. <sighs> Maybe they figure out where he got it. Then they can help not let kids get more of them. What if someone's selling knives to kids, Dad? Well, I'll tell you he, what. He threatened me. He said, and, and Tegan, she kind of points, and, and Tristan. And, and they're dealing with that right now. I'll tell you what, I'll listen for information. Why don't you two, and he kind of reaches in, he pulls out his wallet, and uh, he hands you both a couple of bucks, and he says, uh, why don't you go to get yourself a soda or something? Okay, let me know if you figure out where it came from. I get me one, too. Okay. Grape? Okay. And as you kind of get up, uh, you can hear Kayla being like, what are you doing? Why are you sending them away? I want them to listen to this. And Sebastian's just like, well, I want a soda. And, uh, and, <laughs> and also, Andy was about to get really annoying if he didn't, if he didn't send them away. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, you walk out of the... Uh, I want to make... Uh, I want to see Tegan in like a... Like eye contact. You like, walk out of the gym out. as as Tegan sees that. Uh, you see her just kind of like get up and quietly like <laughs> stand away from her uncle, who's like so kind of outraged and listening to this thing. He doesn't even notice. She walks away, uh, and the three of you uh, go out into the hallway and uh, close the gym door behind you. And Tegan's like, "All right, are we doing this?" I think so. Yeah. Um, yes. I don't think we need more security cards. There's our what? what there's it's ridiculous. They've got so many cameras. Yeah, there's got, there's, I don't think there's anything. We're just also we're kind of just kids. Um, I feel like a fairly security detail seems a bit, a bit much. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I kind of understand it. Uh, that knife was kind of scary. But if we prove that it didn't come from a kid, then, well, I guess I don't know if that if that's yeah. the case, then that maybe uh, well, would change things. So we're gonna so go down. Yeah, I know. So we we right. go. So go check out the security, security first. Yeah, yeah. lead and the then way. We can try the principal's office later. Mm -hmm. So we go. And as you turn to heads towards the security office, let's take a ten-minute break right there. We will pick up uh, uh, 
right, right, right where we left off. Um, don't go anywhere. Uh, don't uh, that. I know how to talk. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> we will be back in ten minutes. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back. And uh, when we left off, our heroes uh, were had left the PTA meeting, and uh, along with their friend Tegan, were headed to the security office to do uh, some uh, snooping. Uh, so. Yeah, let's say you have made it through the hallways of the school and you find yourself in the vicinity of the principal's office in the PT, uh, the the, uh, the security office, um, which, as is, we said, is, discovered before, are adjacent to each other. Uh, is anyone around? Make a mind roll. Okay. And I, make, I don't know if this makes is a thing that can would be task can easier. I can help with. Ooh, it might be a. Is this a separate? Is it, we've never kind of decided if this is a, one that would be a separate role. What, like a help task? Yeah, because yeah. it's like a. If we're both looking, because it's internal. Oh, um. It's your call. I don't. I don't mind either way. Yeah. I just don't remember how. I don't remember if we we smoothed it out how we wanted to. Do no, that. let's let's just say if he's helping you, you get one extra die to roll. Okay. okay. Well, one of my dice, I never recovered, so I'm just going to grab a new one. Can't find it on the floor. Um, You're both doing the same task, like you're looking yeah. at me. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about this later. And yeah, no worries. We'll, we'll, that'll be the rule for today. Oh, 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 four. One, six, six, six. <laughs> Devil. Are you using uh, loaded dice? No, no. I just, I just, I just had to the... pull in a completely new die because I, I dropped them all on the floor. Okay, okay. I guess I trust you. <laughs> Um, so you feel very secure that the halls are empty wherever the security guards are. They are not watching this area. Okay. I like turn around and give a thumbs up to Annie. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I guess we gotta get in. I didn't think that far. Um, wait, how does he? So I'll look at the door. It's like, I can tell it's like a lock and key, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Justin kind of just stares at it for a bit and turns to Tegan and Annie and just goes, I don't know what to do. Uh, I could probably try and pick the lock, but I've never done it before. Well, well. Good luck. Otherwise, I think we're gonna have to find keys. I tried the doorknob okay. first, actually. <laughs> just, just, just to make sure. <laughs> uh, no, let's say the door's locked. Okay. <laughs> just, 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 just. <laughs> no, that's... I just look at Annie like, oh, this is a good, good call. Yeah, it's always good to make sure. Um. Okay. I'll pull up. I'll be pin out of my hair, and then like half of her hair like falls down because that's like it's wild, crazy hair. It just does not respond to her trying to style it ever so she hands you a bobby pin Thank i you. guess um, that's the only thing i have i've only seen this happen in movies as i get down to try <laughs> and pick the lock <laughs> all right justin this is a speed roll uh, which mm -hmm. controls dexterity and finesse um yes. you can roll uh three because uh that is what you've got um, yeah i would like to use the plus one I got from I oh from activating your bond <gasps> yeah yes. yeah absolutely I mean, um you know yeah. and um in all fairness it occurred to me during the break when you stood up to the bully on the bus that was very much an activation of your other bond big boy big presence this is true so okay. you actually have two of those to spend uh you will you know and you can use them both here uh if you uh, did we wait did we say you can use them both at once um you need to add plus one to one through. You can play each bond in exchange for a point one time per session. We did not make a rule banning no. them yep. using set two at once, so you could theoretically use them both here. And if we've I changed this I rule will. by the time this airs, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll use both. Yeah, so yeah, my, my two bonds as young Justin is big boy, big present, <laughs> and okay. I leap before I look and speak before I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have like a type when I play characters. I love it. Um, <laughs> oh. That is three successes. Oh. Six, one, one. 
And uh, Justin, it, it takes you a little bit. You've seen this on TV. And, you know, at first it's kind of like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And then, you know, as you kind of start to finagle it in there, it's like you, you start feeling like, oh, my God, it's like, I think I just tripped a tumbler. And, you know, and then you push a little bit more and then like a little more, you know, shaking. And after a little bit, like you, you, you kind of you're, 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 you're pu pushing on it and turning it. And like you just hear like a click. And you put your hand on the doorknob and you try to turn it and it turns and the door creaks open. Just you know, like throws his arms yeah. up in the air and looks at Teek and, and Annie. I can't believe you just did that. I can't believe I just did that either. It's just, this is a skill. This is a craft. You should hone that. Okay, let's go. And she's going to kind of, <laughs> she's going to kind of like kind of make her way in did the did the pamph the, the uh pamphlets for being a hall monitor have any information on what's in this office like or where anything um, would be if there's like a file or report like is that like a like no but you yeah. did get to case the room out during your preparatory okay. work so any searching you want to do uh will have you know i will lower the difficulty level on what i would have made it okay i think Okay. I want to find... Okay, there's two... In my mind, I want to do two things. I want us to go through, try to find the security footage of... Because we have a rough timeline from the day that it happened, maybe four days within the previous four days. If we can find a camera looking at his locker within the previous four days, see if anyone else touched that locker who was not Owen. Two, I want to see if we can find the like an incident report. Like what was written up about this like i want to see if they filed like a report and if they have like a filing cabinet that we can like i just want to make like i just want to make sure that if there's anything okay. weird if they like didn't file a report and this ended up in like like then what then anyways i just i just those are the those are the two things i want to happen i don't know if one if like i think we need to look at the cameras for sure but like i i want to look through the files too no those are those are those are great things to do let's do both of those things um so First, uh, first, I let's go cameras, to the video cam yeah, cameras. Yeah, cameras, okay. I think, are more important. Tegan is down the hall keeping an eye out. She says that she will, uh, you know, you, you will hear her holler and scream up a storm if anybody's okay. coming. Okay. Um, so, first, the video cameras. Um, I assume you are both watching together, so uh, this can count as a help roll, so you can get one. We'll kind of like guy, zoom uh, speed through. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, it's a mind roll, yeah. So, with, one, with Justin's help, it's five. five, yeah. Um, none of your skills apply, yeah. Okay, so. so five, five. And I think after picking the lock, it's like you can definitely roll, but I think there's like a, a few seconds of him looking at his hands, like, I'm how did I do this? How, how did I do this? Like, I saw his power within my hands. It's okay. I have, <laughs> I've leveled up. You have a little bit of practice doing some street magic, uh, you know, which, you know, you've, you, you've tried to learn after seeing some TV shows, and um, you were wondering if maybe there, there's some way maybe to... Maybe they're more useful than I thought. I might, yeah. I might try watching more videos on them. Yeah. <laughs> As we're, like, skimming through, Annie's like, I'll take you to the library later. They've got a oh, whole yeah, section on it. Oh, okay. Like <laughs> that oh, ah. <laughs> well, Annie, spokesman for the library. Um, okay, so... <laughs> so you got a one and six. What did six. you get? A one, one and six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this theoretically it would be easier because I scoped it out, or maybe not. Don't know. Yeah, you. Um, well, you scoped out. <laughs> I guess that's the office, but, yeah. Um, but two successes is fine. Um, you you start kind of like speeding to the tapes and stuff, and you can see uh, Owen visit his locker a couple of days or you know before, mm -hmm. just like he told you. Um, and then you speed through it, and at first. It doesn't look like anybody touches the locker after Owen visits it a couple of days earlier. But then, since both of you are watching very closely, Justin notices a weird jump cut in the footage the night before the knife is found. And Annie, you rewind and you look at it a couple of times. And watching the clock, you know, the, the, the timestamps, you notice that the previous evening at about 9 p.m., the cameras suddenly jump 
to 920. 20 minutes of footage is missing. Now I need to look at the files. I need to know who was on duty that night. Annie, give me a mind roll. And you can now apply speed reading. <gasps> Woo! Okay, amazing. Okay. Let's go a little. And let's go a little. If Justin reach. is helping look through the files, then you can have a, a point for Justin helping. Yay! Okay. I honestly I don't think Justin is helping. Okay, fair enough. Fair <laughs> I enough. I think he's going back and forth still on the video. Yeah, you see, um, you you can like start looking at other stuff too. You don't have to. You don't have to I, supplement any tasks. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. Um, no, this is what no, I like that you're being true to your character. No, I love it. It's not good. just giving her the extra diet. Yeah, no, it's nothing. good. Yeah. Okay, come on, Annie. Let's read. Three, six, six, one. Okay. You find, uh, you find the duty roster the night of the missing footage. Um, three guards were on duty. Uh, Jack Bell, Charlie Gray, and Jill Sargent. And you also find the incident report that Charlie Gray wrote up after he discovered the knife. And uh, it says essentially 10-inch um, military-style hunting knife discovered in locker of student Owen Bates. There is... Um, it says uh, knife... Um, surrendered to sheriff. Okay. So I think here. Justin, like, is very suddenly behind you, like, yeah. reading over your shoulder. He just goes, does it say anywhere where, um, like, who told him the yeah, knife was there? That was Charlie my next seemed, question. Charlie Gray seemed to just know. He said, I know you. Told. Yeah, he said, I know you have a knife in there. There's nothing in the report about that. Are these reports by, like, day? Like, can I, like, chronologically, can I look, like... Oh, like, to see if, like, there's a previous report on... Yeah, like, got a report that this will look into, which, I mean, would be silly. Mm -hmm. As someone who's had to write a lot of incident reports, like, like, you would not put that in the incident report, but just in case. The incident reports are in chronological order, and, okay. you know, with your three successes, I'm going to say you, you are able, easily able to scoot through the files, and, and you do not seem to find anything indicating how the security guard was aware of the knife. Okay. From, um, have there been other instances of things being found on people? Like, not obviously not like to the degree of knives, but like, are there other examples of things being found on students that aren't meant to be brought in? Just so I can see like, is it normal not to mention who told you? So I want to see like past instances, like, I don't know, like, maybe someone brought alcohol. Yeah. Like, can I check like, Oh, Mr. This This told me that um, Jeffrey brought alcohol. Like, can I tell what the norm is when doing these reports? Okay. Um, yeah, I would say with her three successes, you can still look for stuff like that. Okay. So it's like, um, yeah, you find an incident report of a girl who brought a you know fifth of vodka in. You know, was found with like a fifth of vodka in her you know in her bag. Um, and, uh, the incident report mentions, uh, that the security guard spotted her putting the bottle in her bag. Was it, like, named a security guard that spotted her, or just security guard? Uh, that security guard was, um, Jack Bell. Okay. So I think when, like, just, I think, like, Justin... Even though we kind of clearly didn't help, <laughs> Justin does point down and goes, yeah. okay, I guess, I guess it's, normally they would say he saw what he was told. Um, it's kind of weird in this case. Though. Something happened to your audio or is that just yeah, something? Yeah, they got like, you sound underwater all of a sudden. Oh God, I have no oh, idea. All, all good oh, now. It's back now, yeah. Maybe it's just a directional thing. I don't know. Very strange. Maybe I don't have a directional mic, so it well, shouldn't be right, a directional thing. Um, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Maybe reality is warping around. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll say that again, though. Um, you yeah, know, it seems like normally 
you would mention Hugh brought it up or Hugh noticed? And I like point at that um, alcohol report. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of odd that they don't mention it here. Yeah. Because hmm. Mr. Gray definitely knew. And I don't know if that's because he just saw them bring it in or someone told him. Well, if you saw a kid with a knife, you would confiscate it immediately. That's yeah, not. That's what I would think. That's not a. I know there's a knife in there. Open up. That's. If he knew he had a knife, someone would have had to t tell him. Can I look around this space? Like, what kind of things are in here? Like, are there any personal effects? Like, does anyone have, like, do they have separate desks or is it just, like, the one security station? Give me a mind roll. Okay. One one. I see. Um, one one. one. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, like, can I see, like, if there are photos, can I see if any of these people are into anything outdoorsy versus, like, do they keep, like, what kind of things do they keep stocked in this room? That's kind of for your, that's what I'm kind of get, trying to get a general idea on. Okay. Um, there is only one chair and desk. It's like, mm -hmm. and it looks like only it's only built for one person to man the security office at a time. Um, there's, you know, the filing cabinet, the video equipment. There's a little fridge, and if you look inside, it's full of waters and sodas. Uh, and, uh, and, yeah, on the wall, there are a couple of... Uh, pictures taped up um there's a picture of um a woman security guard who you think is possibly the jill sergeant you you know uh you read about on the duty roster it's the only the only woman mentioned um with uh, a, a picture looks like maybe with her husband and two kids and uh, they're they're at like a what looks like a big community pool or something like that and uh then there is um another picture of um uh charlie gray and uh he is uh standing in front of uh like a like a classic car like an old you know an old convertible ford or something like that that he looks like he's like looking all you know proud to be standing next to um and uh there's a picture of um Jack Bell, and he's posing with uh, a little girl who looks like might be like daughter or niece or something like that. She's wearing a happy birthday hat. Uh, and then there is a picture of um, Charlie and Jack together uh, wearing like fishing gear uh, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of, you know, standing, um, you know, next to a rowboat on a dock. Is there a computer in here? Yes. I want to try to, like, look them up on Facebook. <laughs> like, I just want to see, I just want to, like, I don't even need to be logged in or anything. I just want to, like, look through all their profile pictures to see if, like, it's a one-off for one of them. Like, if one of them, because, like, people who hunt and fish, like, that's all of their... <laughs> That's all of your profiles. But like if one of them was like, oh yeah, I just like went fishing with my buddy once, like maybe that's not going to be a full run. I just wanted to try to skim through if I can see if I can pull that up. Um, Give me a mind roll. Okay. Speed rating? Probably not. <laughs> Uh, nah, like nah. the filing cabinet, I gave you that because it's like a large amount of reading. information yeah, yeah, that you yeah. were trying to get through. Okay. This, is... this is skimming. Here we go. No, nothing. Nothing. Facebook's probably blocked on the school find... computers. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, you, you don't find profiles for any of these people. And, and, you know, let's be honest, it's 2008. Facebook's only been around for a couple of years. And I guess like, my people, space you know, would be older people are not going to have That's you know, fair. It'd be, very yeah. few older people. It'd be college kids at this point on Facebook. Um, I guess about, so, yeah, way more. Yeah, it's, my it's friend, not I remember my friends all having whatever. We didn't have a, like a computer that worked at my house. I was like, "What are you? What are you guys talking? What's Facebook? What are you guys talking about?" <laughs> the Facebook. The Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Exactly. Um, yeah. So okay. So well, someone has a connection to hunting or fishing, to outdoorsiness, I guess. But that isn't. Yeah. That isn't solid proof. Hmm. 
it's you know means to have access to despite uh, aside from just being an adult and would have been here and have access to changing these records or uh, of the thing can okay so if this is a file can i like right click info see like a last edit like last changes made or something is that like a like recent um the f like I, wait which file so the 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 security footage oh like can i see um, when this change was made it just looks like the system... Well, I'll tell you what. Make a mind roll. <laughs> and while, while she's doing that, can I think on... So there, there was... Um, what's his name? Charlie Gray, Jill Sargent, and... What's the other one's name? Jack Bell. Jack Bell. Do I know any students with those surnames? Ooh. You don't? But you don't oh. know that many students That's yet. Fair. It's been yeah. a rough ride for you. Yeah, and you're new and you're you're, you're kind of new in this neighborhood, so it's mm -hmm. you know you, you you don't know. We're learning a lot of these kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, what'd you get there, Caitlin? Big fat nothing. As far as you can just tell, it looks like the security system stopped working or was shut down for 20 minutes, and you know there doesn't seem to be any way, at least as far as you can figure out, to guess why or what happened. Yeah. Um, and at that moment, you hear Tegan's voice going, guys, guys, the principals are coming, the principals are coming, the principals are coming. Okay. And then like a second later, Principal Batero like appears behind her. And Tegan oh. looks at you and says, sorry, I got distracted. I was practicing my duck face. And um, uh, the principal says, um, what are you doing in here? Uh, so you uh, remember the business card I gave you? You're the detective. Unfortunately. I actually was going to come talk to you next, uh, but now I think that that is inevitable and happening right now. So, hi. Mm-hmm. Hi. Um, <laughs> we have something to show you. And it's very important, and I think it could help with this case. What case? And I'm going to, like, do this <laughs> to... Um, um, have her follow us into the room and show up the security footage. Um, See? I'm like, okay, contextless, this makes no sense. We think Owen Bates might have been framed. Um, and he gave us a timeline and, you know, take with a grain of salt, you have known him longer than we have, but I don't think he would have been nice to me if he genuinely did do it. It seems a little, again, like I told Justin, uh, it seems a little above his level of, you know, connivory. He's more of a, like, blunt instrument kind of uh, intimidation. Anyways, I, I think that maybe he was telling the truth and that the knife wasn't his, but we can't figure out why or how. Um, he gave us a timeline of the last time he may have been in his locker, which was maybe like three or four days ago, which again, very sorry for this illegally obtained evidence, but he hadn't been there in like three days and that was true. And then the night before the knife was found in his locker, we found this and she'll gesture to Justin too. Show and I'll him. be like, pay close attention to the timestamp over here and I'm gonna press play and let it play. Um, so they can see the time jump. All right. Um, <laughs> make a heart roll, Annie. Oh, no. I would like... I don't know can I please have um, yeah, you, can, have you can help. Okay. You All right. I mean, I would have said Justin Spearhead. I just gave context. But <laughs> I'm just... I don't have as good a roll on this one. <gasps> okay. Okay. Two ones. Snake eyes. <laughs> She looks at it and says, well, that is interesting. Um, it's not enough evidence I, for anything. I haven't known Owen for very long. And I know my dad says, if I don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything nice and um, bad at all. Um, but I don't think Owen's smart enough to know how to edit this. And But you've know, known him longer than I have. So I think you can probably attest to that better than I can. I think something's going on here. Make a heart roll. Okay. <laughs> two successes, two sixes. That is interesting, but 
a good detective, and she looks at you, Annie, knows not to jump to conclusions. That's why I'm not jumping to conclusions. I just need more evidence. I need to know what's I happening. I will bring this up with the security officers. I think you shouldn't do that. I think you shouldn't. The sheriff, maybe, but I think you shouldn't involve the security officers. I will take your advice. Uh, under consideration. Do you now, know? I think it's time that the two of you get back to your parents. Okay. Um, Annie's gonna pull the photo off the wall that has the hunting and fishing trip. Um, and she just says, military style hunting knife. And she hands it to her and she goes around the corner and goes out and back to the parents. We need to Just... get soda first. I don't like it. <laughs> we walk to a vending machine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, you you find the vending machine to get soda. Anything else you want to do before you go back to find your fathers? She didn't get us in trouble. No, maybe she kind of believes us a little bit. Or she uh, was in on it. If she was in on it, I feel like she'd have done more to get us in trouble so we don't keep prying but then we would then then we would know uh, if she wanted to shut us up i don't know i'm i'm hoping that it maybe she believes us but i I'm, don't know i'm getting kind of believe vibes from her but i'm I not a great so. judge of character so i don't know i mean i hope i hope she believes us but now i don't know i don't know who knows what Let's get back to. Let's get back so they don't worry about us. We go and slide our way in. Yeah, and uh, you, you slide your way back in, and you see that the parents are sort of studiously questioning uh, this uh, James Berkland guy, who's still talking about the new increased security measures. Um, and um, and the meeting ends, and you go home. And uh, the next day, you show up at school. What would you like to do? I want to go to the principal's office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You uh, you head right to the principal's office. I think actually, I think Annie asked to go to school, go in early, like asked to get like dropped off on. Caleb's way to work or something so that she can go and like oh. not via bus. Yeah, was, uh, what for? Um, the school library has some books that the library library doesn't, and I don't want I don't like anybody. I don't like my fellow students, and the library's quieter when there's nobody there. Mid-day. And she like looks at and Justin and goes Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I uh Amy's trying to lie. She just she just says I, stuff and hopes I'm, that it's weird enough. What? Yeah, no, I don't think there's anything I can think <laughs> of to reasonably help. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> um one success. Uh he, he he sort of looks at you and kinda of arches an eyebrow and says, You get the feeling you're up to something, but as long as you're doing it at the library, I'm in favor. Come on. thing to say to her, Annie Case. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay. I guess. Uh, Justin, are you, are you going with her? Um. Did. did and she, she told you. Yeah, she would have definitely okay, told me this was. The okay. Plan. Yeah. In that case, yeah. She definitely If he hadn't you. told me, because we'd have to wake up earlier to do that. And I don't <laughs> think Justin, <laughs> Justin is a deep sleeper. So he would probably have to, like, be prepared beforehand to have to wake up early. It's not like um, an hour earlier. She just wants to get there like a little bit before the buses start getting there. Yeah. And it's just... But I, I think right, Justin's the kind to like sleep for as long as physically yeah. possible and then but still like leave on time. I respect mm-hmm. that. Um, <laughs> so let's say you get to the school about 20 minutes before you know you would normally arrive and uh, Caleb drops you off and uh, he says, you know, have a great day, kids, you know, and, and, and heads off to work. 
Okay, okay, what's the game plan? I think maybe I'm. I think we need to scope out Prince, Prince, the principal a little bit. Just I, I, if we talk to her about it again, maybe she's looked into it some more. And I just I want to see how receptive she is to to us fo doing fo following up. And also, I also maybe think we should apologize. That feels right. Okay. Um. I mean, apologies could be good. It might make her, like, less suspicious of us if she is someone we should be worried about. Um, well, she's an adult. She can do whatever she wants. Um, but yeah. I figured at the very least, if she is on the up and up, the apology would maybe be warranted. Yeah. Okay, then. Okay. okay. Yeah, we go, okay. we go to her office. You go to her office. Um, give me... Well, okay. You're looking through the window. This is the one that had the glass window. You do not see anybody in there. You want to do a little knock? You do a little knock. There's no answer. Can I go? I want to go to the front office then, maybe. Sorry? Oh, I said I want to go maybe to the front office then. See if, the like, front the front office. office. Like, the front office ladies have seen, like, the receptionist desk. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's empty right now. Mm. Well, then maybe we'll just camp out outside her office. <laughs> I'm gonna try the doorknob. Oh, <laughs> we don't just go into her office. That's not, you know. I... The doorknob turns. No. I like turn and look to Annie. Like, okay, do we want if we want her on our side for real, and if she is kind of, this would immediately make that not the case. I mean, yeah, but they might have extra information. <sighs> Okay. I, I will... can keep an eye out? Or should think, you keep an I, eye out? I think maybe reverse. Okay, yeah. You keep I an think eye out. I want to talk... If she gets here, I want to talk to her about it anyways. And she thinks I'm the detective, so... Yeah, but... No offense. <laughs> like, Justin kind of like looks at Annie and goes, You're not great at holding a conversation. Okay, but, like, only when I actually want to be talking to somebody, and I actually want to talk to her about this, so... Okay, okay. You keep her distracted if she does come and ask her any questions you need. I'll take a look around. Oh, boy, this is a bad idea. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and take a look around. I want to, um... I want to see if I can find any files on... So I've never... I, I myself have never broken into the principal's office before, so I don't know what they have. <laughs> I don't know what kind of stuff they have, but I want to see if I can find any files on um, the faculty here. Um, if anything like that is kept in the principal's office. Give me a mind roll. Okay. We split mind this the mind. wrong way. It's yeah. great. <laughs> it's good. Like... No, I love it. It's better this <laughs> way. Um, one success. Okay, um, one success. You head into the principal's office and start looking through the filing cabinets. Um, there, obviously there's a ton of files on the faculty, but figuring out what's what and what's important, you know, you're, you're kind of just lost in all the information. Um, and, uh, as you're looking around, Annie, you see Principal Batero rounding the corner, coming towards you. And she says, uh, oh, if it isn't the detective. Unfortunately, yes, it is me. I will kind of, I want to like meet her as she walks forward. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, I did want to apologize for uh, last night because we shouldn't have been in there. But we didn't think anybody would believe us uh, if if we didn't have anything, any grounds to stand on. But I do think we have a little bit of a grounds to stand on. And just to be clear, I don't know what I believe about Owen. He was not very kind to me. And he is not very kind to a lot of people. But I don't think that he should have to go to Juvie for something he didn't do if he didn't do it. Um and well, I know I'm not very I'm not a very good detective, maybe, but I was hoping you could help me 
figure out if he is or isn't because no one else seems to care. I take the idea of someone being wrongly accused of a crime very seriously. But now it's in the hands of the sheriff, who I think is probably better qualified to determine if Owen is guilty than either of us. Wouldn't you agree? This is true, but you work here and you work with people who work here. And you have a better lay of the land than the sheriff does. This is your school, not his. Make you a heart roll. Who? Okay, okay, okay. By the way, how loud are you talking? Um, I mean, just normal conversation. She's not like shouting or whispering. She's okay. Just... So, what are you doing while this is going on? Are you still just searching the files? I can't hear this, can I? That's my yeah. It depends. No. Okay. No, the worst, it's the worst lookout in history. But uh, yeah. <laughs> she said she just wanted to have a conversation. That's yeah, all yeah, she's that's saying. True. <laughs> um, I'm point. still looking. Um, I think I'm looking for any. Um, I think we've we've come to like at a very least between me and Annie, we have like an unspoken kind of suspicion of the security detail. So I'm trying to see if I can find any repeated reports on um, Owen from anyone in particular. Okay, that's a different target. So I'll let you roll again. Um, give me another mind roll. One success. It was the exact same role as well. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, you do not find any reports about Owen. But you do find the security files. And while you're going through them, you find a mess of correspondence between the principal and this guy, James Birkin, uh, Brooklyn, who you saw talking at the PTA meeting last night. And Brooklyn is repeatedly trying to convince the principal to spend more school budget on security. And she is repeatedly telling him that the school is fine and doesn't need it. Meanwhile, what did you get, Annie? Only one, only one success. And she says, I am very impressed by your stalwart determination and i think you are going to make a fantastic advocate someday you should consider being a lawyer when you grow up but right now you should consider getting to class and being a good student and letting the professionals handle this if owen is not guilty the sheriff will figure it out or it will come out when he appears in juvenile court will it though The system is not always perfect, but at the largest scale, we have to have faith in it, or all of this falls apart. Okay. Will you do me a favor for me to have faith in it then? And she's just looking at you. Will you put in some kind of word with the sheriff so that he'll talk to me so that I can ask him? And then I will drop it for good. Make a heart roll. <laughs> okay. Is your heart three? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's six and a one. <laughs> I will bring your concerns to the sheriff. You promise? Cross my heart. Now will you get to class? The buses aren't even here yet. There's nothing wrong with being early. Well, can I get you something from the vending machine as an apology for crashing your security station? Um, make a, make a heart roll. 
<laughs> Lord God. <laughs> two snake eyes, two ones. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, my rolls are the way worst to roll. No, no, speed my speed rolls, my worst roll. Well, don't tell anybody. Do I like? I do like to start the day with some ring dings. So come on. Okay. And uh, she well, hope, goes yeah. with you towards yeah. uh, the vending machines, hoping that walking past the window will alert my brother to <laughs> what is going on. So I that am is gonna my... roll mind draw to see if I notice. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Imposed. Beautiful. Zero successes. Yeah. I'm so looking. <laughs> yeah, you're just like looking at these letters, just trying to like you know, trying to sort through them, and you know figure out what you can if anything else and um even talking talking to take the... her oh. to the the yeah. vending machines you get her her ring dings mm -hmm. and uh and then she I comes go, back and, i assume uh, that i assume that <laughs> <laughs> i think i fully i'm walking out as she's walking in so i like walk to the door and i just see her looking through the window and she she just i'm gone just, i've already gone to, um, I'm gone to class i'm sorry um, what are you doing You said your door was always open to us on the first day of school, so I figured I'd... I can't think of anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think he just gives up half half lie. I meant that figuratively. My door is only open to you if I am in the office. I seem to have misunderstood. I am very sorry. <laughs> Um, mm, make a mind roll. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> make a heart roll. Oh my god. <laughs> well, no success. No, my gosh. No, that's the thing. You're good at that one. You're good at that one. And uh, she, um, she, she kind of says, uh huh. Well, maybe you'll understand better uh, after uh, an afternoon of detention. Oh, no. <sighs> And she okay. gives you a detention slip, and um, you go to class for the day, and then you have to spend an extra hour in detention at oh the end of the day. God. And when you finally get out, you find your sister waiting for you outside the school. I thought you were keeping an eye out. You didn't give me like, any signal. I just like... said I was going to talk to her. How that's supposed to know she could be coming back then? I don't know. We didn't make a plan. <sighs> Even Tegan was a better lookout. Untrue. She gave us like a second to figure out what was going on. I was given none. I walked past the door with her like whole time. Be like, hey, we're going, we're going through. And then you I thought, sorry, you, I left. I thought you left. I thought you left. That was so a I class. This would have never have happened if I wasn't reading. Which is another reason why reading sucks. I'm going to kick your butt one day. You could try. Oh, well, no. but and I will relay <laughs> um, as we go, like heading um, back home. Um, I'll relay what I learned of um, was it Berkeley, 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 yeah. Berkeley. Um, Berkeley. Berkeley insisting on upping security okay. and principal's uh, original he um, hesitations to do that, but then obviously, judging by the PTA meeting, the uh, eventual conce conceding of that stand. Um, Do we currently? He seems, he seems really, he seems really pushing for upping security. Um, honestly, it seems kind of suspicious. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't really know much more than that. So okay, so our current security are through that, through Brooklyn, like the current school yes. security. He wants to up it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the the security guards would have been hired by him, not by the school. Essentially, the security, yeah, the, the school okay. contracts what? his company to provide security, so he sends over security guards and you know and security like cameras and so you know whatever. Okay. Whatever their budget affords. So that's interesting. Then. I mean, it definitely is a motive, and it is. Owen's the perfect person to the blame on he's already kind of a bit of a troublemaker so it's not about owen no it's about the contract with berkland seems like it 
And if they're a security um, facility, they would, I mean, have all kinds of reasons to have access, despite being, you know, old enough to buy it, to have access to implements and weaponry and knives and stuff. Yeah. Where I, can... I... I honestly think it makes sense that maybe it is security, but I, I don't know where to go from here for really any proof. I mean, you could probably talk to the sheriff if you want to do that. I tried to pitch to the principal to tell him that he should talk to me, but she said that she would forward my concerns. Hmm. So it might be kind then of hard. Maybe we should forward the concerns to him ourselves. I feel like that's the only thing that I've got. Otherwise, figuring out where in town sells military-style hunting knives. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be kind of hard. Yeah. Stop, make a pit stop? At the yeah, sure. Sheriff's before we go home? I don't see why not. Okay. See what happens. We're gonna bike down to the sheriff's department. <laughs> okay. Um, you bike down uh, to the Costa Vegas Sheriff's Office. Um, one, sorry, one and, question. Is Brooklyn yeah. based in Costa Vega? Yes. Uh, it is. Brooklyn okay. Security, yeah. Brooklyn uh, would be in uh, their headquarters. Uh, if you look it up, you look it up online, you find their headquarters is uh, in the south part of Costa Vega, which is uh, the business district, essentially. Okay. Okay. Skyscrapers, tall buildings, that kind of stuff. You know, that's that's where all the corporate stuff is in this town. Okay. Okay. Um, what do we say to the sheriff? Um, Let's make a plan this time, because we... Yeah, that's a good times. This is, you know, third time's a charm. Uh... Sheriff's sure, office is busy. There are a whole bunch of deputies running around, you know, doing stuff. Uh, you walk in, or you're standing in front of the building, or what? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think we're maybe just front. standing in front, chat talking. Okay. I yeah. think maybe less breaking and entering this time. Just yeah, less breaking and entering. I do think we should bring up the edited security footage. Okay. How do we not get in trouble for that? Um, that's a good question. Maybe we suggest they look at it. Maybe we tell them to look at it? I, th I think it might be hard to do that. We are kind of just like kids being like, hey, this is how you should do your job. I don't know how to suggest this to someone with... I mean, the principal already barely believes us. Yeah. What if... I'm going to activate my bonds. I leap before I look. And yeah. I speak before I think. And I'm just gonna. I just say, "What if?" And I just walk in. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fair enough. You, and she you, follows. You Lex another, <laughs> yeah, you're. You can't earn another bond point for it, but uh, yeah. Well, uh, this is me you being true to your character, and you run on in, and. Um, uh, a deputy who's standing behind uh, the desk, uh, right at the entrance, is sort of like, "Yeah, what's up, kids?" Hi, um, I'm um, Kyle Sunson, and this is my friend here, um, Ellis Dawkinson. Uh, we're here with, uh, we were sent here by the principal of um, our school, Me Jack, just immediately forgot the name. What's the name of our school again? Plato <laughs> Creek High. Pardon, say that again? Plato Creek Junior High School. Plato Creek Junior High School. P-L-I-D-O. Okay, we're with Plato Creek Junior High School. Um, the, pr the principal has sent us over to let you know that they found something odd with the security footage. And they thought it would be important for the, the case with Owen um, Rates? Bates, I think. Bates? Bates. Yeah. Um, you have information about a case? Mm -hmm. I don't really have much information myself. I was just sent by the principal to let you all know. I think there's something wrong with the phones or something. I don't, I'm don't. i not really entirely sure. We were, and, on the, we were uh, passing by anyway, so. Sure. Um... He says, uh, well, what do, what's your information? Um, as you just said something about the footage being weird, that there was a like, part section that was skipped. Yeah, right? like, a, like a discrepancy in something or another. I don't know. Like they were, yeah. they were trying to look about, look up, look at what maybe happened and something was weird. So they wanted to get a, det a detective. I'm not even sure who's in charge of the case. Um, the sheriff maybe was for a little while. The sheriff probably to come see if he could take anything from that 
Okay, well, I'll make a note of it, and I'll, uh, I'll pass it to the sheriff. Thanks, kids. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Have a good one. If, if possible, definitely get to um, them as soon as possible, because um, a friend of ours is kind of in trouble, and I really don't want them to have to go through all of this, if, if this is going to help them, or I don't know. You know, and I think um, Justin's going to have a very weird level of introspection as being like, I read and watched a lot of things about kids ended up going to GV and the kind of pipeline that has to do with the prison system. And as awful as Owen Bates, and I had a look at Annie, Bates, right? Bates, Bates is to quite a few people. And if this can help in any way, um, I think it would be really important. It could change a, a kid's entire life. Make a heart roll. <laughs> Two successes. Nice. There's that heart roll. <laughs> very touching. I will make sure the sheriff gets this. And um, and I'm very busy, kids. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. We go back outside. Okay. I don't know. I thought that would work. I hope it did. She, they seemed kind of like dismissive of it. Um, yeah. Okay. So... Either we break into a hunting and fishing store establishment and look at their security footage, because I doubt they would give us any information. Or Berkeley, Berkland? I don't know. Um. Maybe we talk to the guards who are on duty? Maybe. That feels like a bad idea. Yeah, they kind of feel involved. Yeah, obviously one of them did it. Yeah. Theoretically. Hypothetically. Um, on a hunch. Hmm. I think the hunting kind of shop might be hard because I imagine there are a few and we don't know when the blade was bought. Exactly. So that would be quite a lot of fish to skim through. Um, Berklin, maybe. But I think that would be probably just as hard, if not harder, to get harder. into. Yeah. How about, I think Annie wants to use a, an epiphany point. Okay, yeah, epiphany points, um, which I guess the audience will probably know what they are by now. Um, or token or whatever we yeah, decide to call yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, it, it, normally you have to earn these, but because uh, um, we're still working on that mechanic and you guys are little kids at this point. We're, we're just sort of giving you, we've given each of the players one epiphany point for free to spend, spend an epiphany point when they feel like they might be in a corner or need a little push in a direction and a mystery. You've seen this moment a million times in detective shows. The detective suddenly realizes, Hey, wait a minute, something happened and we saw it. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, so Annie's going to spend her epiphany point, And as you're thinking this over, you're like, Berkeley. I think we're walking our bikes, I think kind of down. Yeah. yeah, and you know, you're like, do we talk to Brooklyn? Do we talk to the security guards? Do we? And then it occurs to you. When you were at the library and you were looking up the hunting knives, you had to dig through a whole bunch of books till you could find the name of this knife was military style hunting knife. And it was That's written exactly in the report. That's exactly what it was called in the report, in the report. written by Charlie Gray. By Charlie Gray. He knew exactly what the knife was, was like the model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she fully just like stops her bike and like you have, takes you like yeah, a I few feet to realize. I'm like, I don't really know what any. <laughs> I like, turn around. He knew what the knife was called. Charlie Gray, in his report, he knew what the knife was called. It took us two hours at the library to figure out what the knife was called. Oh. If I showed a picture of it to 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 my dad, he would not be able to tell me what that knife was called. Oh. So it has to be Charlie's knife. It might have been Charlie's knife. Or, at the very least, he bought it. Okay. So now we just need to find, I guess, more proof that it's Charlie's? I don't know how to do that. Um, I don't know how to get adults to believe us. Yeah. Hmm. 
feel like... I don't know. I feel like the principal kind of believes a little bit, but not seriously enough. Yeah. But, I mean, she... I think she's looking out for the school. I mean, it and feels if she, like it. If she doesn't want the security... More security in the school. And we can show her that they manipulated her. Maybe she'll take it more seriously? That's personal, then. Yeah, but how do we show that they manipulated her? Uh, the whole manipulation is the knife. Planting a knife in Owen's Maybe locker. it's just getting her to think about it. For real. She has a little bit, sort of, but, like, if we can get her, if we can really, truly convince her to think about it from that angle... Maybe she'll do something about it. Otherwise, I don't know how to prove it. From my memory of like reading those reports and seeing like the, the correspondence between Birklin and the principal, how recent were those? Like, when did it first really start, and when did it kind of end? Um, it's been going back, you know. Through, through the entire previous school year. Okay. It's quite a bit. Okay. Looks like he's been working on her for a while. Yeah. You want to spend your epiphany point? I think or... so. Yeah. This feels like this feels like the moment. Yeah. Okay. Like I think we both stopped in yeah. like on like the side of the like, road. We know we just don't know. No, it's okay. This where? is like I mean, it's weird. We're you know this will be the middle of the season, but it's our first game, so we're still learning how to play in this yeah. this mold. But especially as kids, like I feel like there's like I feel like I'm playing in the constraint of being a preteen, so it's like or a tw tween, so it's like yeah. I, I don't. There's I feel like I have so much less power here. I like don't know where to go. Justin, it suddenly occurs to you, the answer is in Bird Dog Billy and Gumshoe Sue in the case of the Ghost Cat where they tricked the bad guy into confessing on tape and admitting a key piece of evidence. And that is how the kids got the grown-ups to believe them. Okay. I, I think, um, like, Annie had stopped after their epiphany, and I had to, like, turn around to look at Annie, confused as why they stopped. And then I kind of, like, stare at them for a moment and I my eyes widen and goes um we just need to get Charlie to mention doctoring the footage or knowing about the knife on tape but then that should be enough to at the very least get enough suspicion that the principal will look into it okay so I mean maybe we can get him to I mean, I don't know if he'd confess, but maybe he would... Who would believe you kind of a thing? Not know we were recording? I think yeah, my dad I has just, one. I guess I just need to know what buttons to push to get him to confess. Him or... Is... What's his... Mr. Berkland still around? Uh, James Berkland, yeah. James Berkland. I mean, I guess we could just go in all, I know what you did, and see what happens. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Worst case scenario, we get nothing. Yeah. And we try another guy and see what happens. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let's okay. do it. Okay. I think I have an idea. We get on our bikes and we. So, go. where are you going to? We're going to go pick up um, one. I think. I think. Sebastian is definitely someone who would have like three different kinds of like digital cameras and so <laughs> she's gonna go and like find one swap out the SD card and we're gonna have just to have on hand okay and then I think who did you want to talk to the first? next day next day yeah yeah you check it's got like pictures of Sebastian like taping himself like lip syncing songs and stuff like <laughs> of course of course it does of course it does <laughs> Yeah. Like they got candids of Caleb or like most of them are like Caleb trying to get out of the camera, but 
you know, you know, you know, uh, Hugh Grant's dance sequence in Love Actually, you know, where they did dance in all the yeah. It's like it's like that, just in your house instead of in the yeah, yep. prime minister's mansion. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So next next day at school, is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Or before school, after school? I'm thinking. I'm thinking before school. Okay. If that's possible, yeah. Do you think we could get another ride in? I can ask this time, but that okay. might be even more suspicious. Uh, you can tell them that uh, uh, I am I get lonely at the library, and I have allowed you to come hang out with me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think go. he. I think he might buy it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so I I go to uh, library emergency. <laughs> I go to Caleb like the the day before, like before we go to bed and everything, but like. Hey, uh, Dad, can you drop me and uh, Annie off at school early again tomorrow? And you see he's like looking in the mirror and he's like straightening like a bow tie, which he normally does not wear. And he kind of turns to you and he says, What do you think of this on me? Do I look smarter or goofier? Um, <laughs> what color is the tie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's like... It's kind of patterned. Hmm. I think you could do with more polka dots. Polka dots. Hmm. Hmm. And he starts like pulling it off. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Yeah, could you drop me and Annie um, to school a little bit early tomorrow? Why would you want to go to school early? Um. Well, Annie kind of. Annie's kind of struggling with making friends. Um, so I've been kind of keeping her company. Give me a heart roll. <laughs> I think that I think that should fly immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're right. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I love that answer too. So, uh, and he's just like, uh, and he puts his hand on his shoulders. Like, I am so proud of you, son. Uh, taking care of your sister like that. And he kind of nods, and you can almost see like tears well up in his eyes a little bit. And he says, "Okay, don't cry. Let, let, <laughs> let me just get a normal tie." And uh, he, he he goes upstairs and he gets his regular business tie, and uh, he drops the two of you at the school. Oh, just about you know twenty minutes, half an hour before school's going to start. Okay. Okay. Um. So, game plan is somehow we get him to admit it but near the principal's office. So if the principal walks in, we always have that's the backup of someone who can hear what's going on. That's my plan. I don't know if it's gonna actually work out. No, that's good. There's, it's right. It's across the hallway. They're right next yeah. to each other. So. Um, I can do the talking. Okay. Um, I, I can I've... stand by and also be annoying and knock on the principal's door real fast if we need. Yeah, if okay. she's yeah, that sounds good. Okay, that's as close as the plan we're probably gonna be getting anyway. And he's gonna walk, start walking in. Uh, okay, so wait, you're going to the principal's office? You're going to the security office? We're in the security, office. Security, security office. Security office. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you you open the security office door, and uh, inside you find um, Charlie Gray. Uh, and uh, he is drinking a soda and uh, watching all the security monitors. And uh, he looks at you and he says, uh, Annie, right? That's, that's me. And he looks at you. I don't know. My you. name is Leah Parson. I'm Good sorry? Meet you. Leah Parson. Huh. Okay. Nice to meet you. The. Uh, Parson. Um, and I'm gonna like I'm gonna stay by the door. I'm gonna keep the door open, I think. And just goes um just as m menacingly, intimidatingly as a 12-year-old can be, he just goes, you know, it's really suspicious when part of the footage or the security footage is missing right before the day a student is found of a dangerous weapon. 
make a heart roll. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, Annie, Annie is st- like outside the doorframe, like trying to turn the camera. <laughs> Three successes. Three successes. Um, and he kind of puts the soda down, and suddenly, like his face becomes very serious. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I feel like you do. I mean, if you don't, it just means you're even more terrible at your job than we originally thought. Did you it... break into this office? And I'm going to, like, ignore that question. Like, I think pace around, like, pace back and forth at the doorway. If I remember correctly, around 9 p.m. before the day the knife was found in Owen's locker, there's a sudden skip to about 9.20. Hmm. Am I right about that? And I'll turn to him. Make a heart roll. <laughs> Are you, you said you went into the room? Uh, no, I'm still in the oh, doorway. Because yeah. I think I'm, even, I think as much as I'm performing, I'm yeah. terrified. I'm ready yeah. to run at any given moment. And he has put the pocket or the, the the camera like in her pocket. Like it's it's recording now, just sound basically. Like it's but it's like in the big pocket of her flannel. Uh, over, so she's so she can um, like be it's just there. Two successes. Uh, and he. Uh... You know, you're on very thin ice here, kid. Annie, I think, in just like a hoping to kind of stir it up a little bit, turns to Justin and goes, oh, so she didn't tell him. It seems like she didn't tell you. She knew we were in here and she didn't tell you. Yeah. Maybe she suspects you a little more than... Then we thought she did. Make a heart roll. Can't <laughs> vote that on me. I think that's on you. Yeah. No. Can I? Can I? Can Can Justin help me? Because we're we're bouncing back. We're going off each other. Can Would I get an assist? Help? Um. No, I made him no. roll. His, his okay. Alone, okay. Too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Two ones. Two ones. Two ones. Hey guys. Okay, um, and he's, uh, nobody suspects me of nothing. And even if they did, it wouldn't matter because, well, we all know there's no evidence. I don't know how you kids know, and I don't care. But if you don't drop this and leave it alone, I'll get you expelled just as quickly as I got that Bates kid expelled. And then where are you going to be? Oh my god. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn and go, Mr. Sergeant, you're awful. Uh, Mr. Greg. No, in character, I'm oh. calling him oh, Mr. Oh, okay. Sergeant. I oh. want him to say his name. Mr. Sergeant, you're awful. My name is not Sergeant. Do me a favor, make a mind roll. Uh, no, make a, <laughs> make a heart roll. Heart roll. Okay. Yeah. Art is deception. Two successes. My name is not Sergeant. It's Gray. Charlie Gray. And he points to like his name tag. Remember that name because it's going to be the name of the man who ruins your life. I'm sorry. Reading isn't my strong suit. Um, Yeah. yeah. Not surprised. None of the kids in this school are all that slick. Frankly, the two of you are going to turn around and you're going to march out of here right now. Okay. Okay. Um, do me a favor. Um, Annie, who's working the camera? Annie's working the camera? Yeah, she had it on and in her pocket. Okay, make a speed roll uh, because that is stealth. And I just want to... Not this is not gonna be great, friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She just put like when she was behind the door, she put it in her pocket, recording, and then came in and was talking. But we'll see. Otherwise, I did have an idea, but I do think it's a little bit wild. That's a one. 
I got a one. I rolled two dice. So you turn around and and start walking out, and uh, you you hear him just like, "Don't try telling anybody because no one's gonna believe you." And he sticks his head out the door and he sees you putting the camera like away back mm -hmm. into the pocket. And he's like, hey! And like, he kind of leaps run. out of his seat and ju run, runs run. after you. I am going to, if I can, grab yeah. the camera from Annie and run. Uh, I'm going to say intercom. Run. Intercom. Do I know what that means? Intercom? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, the, it's the overhead speakers. Like, if you go oh, to the front okay. office the where like, the, like it clicks and you can like play sound. Yeah. Intercom. And she's okay. gonna, yeah, you. Yeah. I'm gonna run to where I know the answer comes. Give me a uh, speed roll. It'd be in the front. It'd be in the front office, probably. Front office, yeah. Speed roll, and I'm gonna use running. My skill of running. Yes, you are. You are a track star. So, so I get two. Inspiring track star. Right? Uh, yeah. Four successes. She hands you the camera, and you. Bolt, and this big clumsy security guard tries to come after you, but Can it's I like, try you know, to trip him? I got tripped uh, at the top of this. I got tripped at the top of this. I want to try to trip him. He's not focused on me the anymore. Parallels the full that circle. would be a body roll. Body roll, yeah. 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 Okay. Do I get anything for he's focused on, Justin? No. All right, come on. Come on, Cinematic Parallels, let's do it. <laughs> There's a one, I got a one. Um, for one, what I will say is you try to trip him and instead he kind of slams into you. That's all right. Uh, and while he doesn't fall, you kind of, you know, go flying again, like onto your butt, just like you did at the beginning of the episode. But yes, he down. kind of, you know, loses whatever momentum he had and Justin disappears right into the principal's office. You better run, um, Mr. Gray. Uh, and he kind of looks at you and looks over at, you know, and he's just like, he's on the like floor. damn kids. And, and he kind of runs after Justin. Justin, what are you doing? I am going to, as quickly as I can, um, how, a, a like 2008, how clunky are these, how clunky are these cameras? Is it heavy enough to put, hold a button down? But like set it on the intercom button and let it play? I mean, yeah, like they've got weight. It. I mean, you could probably just press play and set it down. Let's okay. say you can. Yeah, I'll press play and set it down on the button so it's playing right into the intercom. I'm going to try and get the principal's chair in the door so I can like lodge it in so they can't get in. Make That's a like, yeah, like, body roll. Okay. I am up. I'm scrambling up and after, even though I'm not going to catch up very quickly, but she is, yeah. uh, Annie is following. Well, maybe a body roll or a speed roll? Uh, it's probably speed if you're trying to be. Probably good. a speed roll because, like, a finesse, you're trying to, like, yeah. stick the thing under. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's not quite strength. Two successes. Two sixes. And uh, you wedge it in there, and uh, Charlie Gray starts banging on the door, and he's just like, hey, what? Give me the thing. And the confession tape starts playing through the hall hallways in all the PA systems, in all the classrooms. And, and Charlie Gray is kind of looking up. Uh, and Worst uh, I'm going to get is detention. How are you feeling right now? And he kind of looks around and, 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 and uh, he, he bolts out of the principal's office and, and disappears mm -hmm. like around the, the corner. And then a second later, you see him like backing up and around the corner comes the principal who is with the sheriff uh, who walks with her. Uh, I'll say the sheriff, um, he's played by Todd Stashwick and uh, he, uh, you know, sheriff sat, you know, very, very stiff posture and he kind of comes along and uh, he, he points at Charlie Gray. He's like, uh, is that your voice? And uh, Charlie Gray is just like, well, now uh, don't. Uh, and my name is uh, Char my name is Gray Charlie, Charlie Gray. Gray. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the sheriff hears that, and uh, he he kind of reaches in and pulls his handcuffs out of his belt, uh, and he says, "All right, we do this the easy way or the hard way." 
And uh, the sheriff, as he's cuffing Charlie Gray, uh, turns to the principal and he says, you know, I was just coming down here to tell you not to send your students down to deliver messages to me, but um, huh, who knew? <laughs> and uh, he takes uh, Charlie away. And... Um, and he kind of like lim limps up a little bit because she uh, got full bodied by an adult. Man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I yeah, like and keep out bruised from a little bit. Door. Yeah. Principal Botera comes up and says, Are you okay? I, yes. Um, I will accept detention with pride. She says, uh, You stood up for someone who was wrongly accused. That is not often easy. And it's something that everyone has to do. Even when other people tell them it's not the right thing. Like even I told when, you. Even when he's a little bit of a jerk. Maybe especially when he's a little bit of a jerk. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm very sorry that I didn't listen to you. And... I won't make that mistake again. But you did. A little bit. You didn't tell him that a couple of students had broken into the security room. Well. He believed me a little bit. I didn't want to see you get in trouble. After all, it'll hurt your career as a detective. And uh, I think you, you've got a gift for this. And your brother. I think yeah, I'm I coming up at this yeah. point. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think yeah, I could have done it. She without sees him. you coming up. Well, detention is canceled. Uh, so oh, thank don't goodness. worry about it. And uh, this school owes you a debt. And as we close this one down, let's say, you know, the principal explains what happened uh, to your parents and uh, both Caleb and Sebastian are incredibly impressed. And Caleb is both impressed and, you know, terrified, furious that you put yourself <laughs> in this kind of danger, you know, yeah, just, just, just like, wow, just like the movies. <laughs> yeah, it's you like one of these speeches where like he's both trying to tell you that you did the right thing and the wrong thing at the yeah. same time, you know, it just it, it's, it's, you it know, like culminates in the being, I'm just glad you're OK kind of talk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Picture you being chased by this giant security guard and he's just like, you know, it's a borderline heart attack territory for him. And uh, that night, the story is covered on uh, KC, uh, sorry, KTCV TV um, and uh, the, the local news station. And um, uh, a reporter appears. Um, she's played by uh, uh, Deborah Ann Wall. And uh, she uh, um, said, uh, standing outside the school. Uh, Thank you, Bob. I am here outside Polito Creek Junior High School where school, uh, school security guard and a prominent local businessman, James Berkland, are facing allegations of planting a weapon in a student's locker in an attempt to convince the school to spend more money on security. So far, it's unclear how the crime came to light, but the sheriff's office has been made aware and both Berkland and the security guard are officially being questioned. More on this story as it develops. This is Katie Lee McGee for KTCV TV. And, uh, and that night, Sebastian and Caleb take you out uh, to your favorite burger joint, uh, Gray Fortress Burger. And uh, you, you just you, you pig out on those little disgusting gray fortress. The burgers. biggest milk, biggest chocolate milkshake known to man. Biggest chocolate milkshake known to man. We crashed and, so hard. Yep. <laughs> and uh, and on the image of you all enjoying your burgers, um, I think we're going to call this one, this case closed. And uh, <gasps> I think it was oh good. my oh goodness, I love that was so really much. good. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I know this yeah. is not the first episode for you all, but yeah. it's for us, and I'm just, I'm so happy. Oh, I love them. Yeah, oh, I was I really them. worried about how this was going to work going in. And, uh, <laughs> no, it's good. Um, it was we, so we, good. We might, we might have a series here. So <laughs> um, on that, uh, why don't we, um, yeah, I guess do our sign-offs. Yeah. It's hard to know when this is going to air or what we'll be doing. General but, stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Draconics. Yeah, um, hi, I'm Draco Draconics, and I played Justin Case today. 
Um, you can find me on Twitter at Draconics. That's D R A K O N I Q U E S. Um, honestly, Rick is right. I have no idea when this is airing, so I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Just keep an eye out. Um, I'll be doing something. There are things in the works, my time, which may be out your time. So just yeah, he's always doing on Twitter. twelve things. So. <laughs> yeah, there's something happening. Check out Twitter. <laughs> yeah, Caitlin Bruder. Hi, I'm Caitlin Bruder, and I have been any case. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at KKAMABR. I'm not uh, just their stuff. Their stuff. I'm in games all the time. You can find them online. Uh, oh, I, I can uh, pitch uh, Thin Places Radio, which is the show I edit and produce there. It's a, a tiny cast, 10 minute or less episodes, uh, sort of a radio show from nowhere, paranormal and strange and very heartfelt and grounded at the same time. So uh, it's on all major podcasting platforms. And I would love it if you checked it out. It's a very, very special little show. And uh, the writer and host are is a very dear friend of mine. And she kills it every time. So it's that's absolutely what I got. incredible. It's incredible. Thank Check you. it out. Um, and uh, I'm your GM. I'm Rick Bud, and uh, I will be back here next week uh, with these fine people uh, for the next case. Uh, and uh, man, I don't have like a sign off for this one yet. Okay, I have to figure that out. Um, but uh, he's closed. I just I used that before. Uh, foolish, <laughs> foolish of you. Yeah, I should have. Okay, okay, maybe we'll move that to the end. Well, yeah, we'll pitch it. We're work workshopping. This workshopping. case is closed. Um, <laughs> so yeah otherwise for tonight I'll just say thanks for tuning in we'll see you next week uh, that's it good night <laughs>